What's up, guys? If you look up here, we've got a full house tonight. I mean, we've got our usual warden. He's here. Yeah, he's wearing cowboy stuff again. He's living in a fantasy world. And we've also got, this is a two-time, two-timer for Joe now, Fusion mm -hmm. Tech, Joe Decker. Yeah, also a fellow out. Cowboys fan. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, whatever. He's a Cowboys fan from New York. He's wearing yeah. Yankee stuff. That's almost as bad yeah. as the Cowboys stuff. No, I know, I know. <laughs> and with us, he's now the three-timer club. We're going to have like a Saturday Night Live five-timer club. Three-timer club from the Shout It Out Loud cast. We've got our buddy Zeus. What's up, Zeus? Hey, guys. Happy to be here again. And Joe, that's awful. What do you like? The Lakers too for basketball? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> right? Oh, what do you like? The Canadians for hockey? And and uh, and the Patriots and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. And join us for the first time tonight is the third member of Shout It Out Loud cast. With us tonight to talk about the Eagles is Murph. What's up, Murph? Hello there. Thank you for the invite. Looking forward to this. Hi, everybody. I think we yeah, Murph, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah. Likewise. So we all we all have a, I mean, of course, we all have a great lo love of, for the Eagles. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit now. Before we get started with this top ten list, we can go around the horn. I feel like I'm on one of the ESPN shows now. Can I do that little thing? And, oh, I can mute Warden. I can mute you. He does it all the time. So yeah, right. but uh, what around the horn? Around the horn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all points every time I agree with y'all from now on. Can I can I can I can I be Bob Ryan and talk real <laughs> real fast and trip over my lips? <laughs> oh gosh, that's great. So there's we'll, a chick we'll, on that show that her name's Spain. I don't know who she is, but she's hot. Spain something. I just I haven't watched in years. I haven't watched it. I couldn't tell you the last time I watched. Murphy, that, you Google uh, search. Sarah are you, Spain. Are you J A Adonde? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the guy from the uh, the Denver Post. What's that guy's name? He's always got the little writings behind him. Yes. Uh, gosh, what's his he, name? He's, he's, the he's, raspy he's, voice. He's older. Yeah, yeah he's, he's an older guy. He's, he's always got his stuff Bob in the Ryan. background. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My friend Bob Ryan from the Boston Globe. <laughs> that guy. I'll find his name now. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure out his name. It'll bother me for the rest of the night now, but I, I know exactly who Murph's talking about. Um, so we'll go around the horn and we'll start with Murph and we'll talk about, you know, how, this is going to be, if you didn't know, we're going to do our top 10 Eagles list tonight, top 10 favorite songs. And we'll probably, I'm sure one time or another, Zeus is going to just kill us on the, on some of these picks on our list. But that's what I love about Zeus. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. He's going to let us know. But we'll start with Murph. Murph, what got you into the Eagles? So, I was born in 73. Eagles were already up and running. I did not get into them until high school. I think I'm of that age group where I heard about Henley and Friars, solo artists. And then only at a later time did I become aware of the, the Eagles. I do remember actually specifically, I was a senior in high school, uh, going on a, to a basketball game and someone gave me a tape and it was hotel California. And I was like, what's this, this is really different. And, you know, I just played it over, over, you know, rewind the cassette. So that led me to actually be probably one of the few people that bought Eagles greatest hits volume two before <laughs> volume one. <laughs> and I actually became very familiar with, you know, this, the, the second half of the seventies before in college and was probably from Zeus who had about 800 CDs as a freshman, <laughs> uh, you know, learn about, learn about the volume one. So, uh, but I, you know, I actually was a pretty big Henley fan and then stumbled upon the Eagles at a later time. Oh, yeah. wow. All right. So let's go to you, Mr. Decker. What about you, bud? All right. Um, I've been listening to the Eagles probably since I was about six or seven years old. Um, when I was a kid, my, uh, we lived in a duplex, and the people next door used to watch me a lot, babysit me a lot. And they had a um, – I guess the kid was probably about in, in high school. And he had albums like crazy. So that's where I got introduced to Kiss, the Eagles. I remember it's clearly um, Foreigner, Queen, Pink Floyd, um, so I've been hearing that stuff for a very, very long time. And, and the Eagles is one of those bands like they're 
after Kiss, they're they're definitely my my second favorite band of, of all time. Like I just I love everything about them. Um, and they're close. They're and they're pretty close to becoming first every now and then too. You know, oh, wow. um, so that's how I, I probably. You know, I was born in '69, so you know they were. They were on the radio constantly as a kid. I remember hearing, you know, Take It to the Limit was on the radio constantly and always playing somewhere. And, and um, yeah, that's how that's how it kind of came about. And i uh, been a fan since then and just continued on still for all, all these years now. Cool deal. Disco Strangler. <laughs> you don't you know what that, do you know what that means, Stevie? Yes, I know what that means. Okay. Stop being... Stop being a cowboy. I don't know, man. We had some deep ACDC tracks, and you didn't know that, and I was really kind of shaking my I don't head. Have, I don't have my ACDC fan card. I promise you that. Mm. I've got my Eagles fan card, though. Yeah. Stevie <laughs> asked me to – he goes, hey, man, are you up for doing an Eagles list? And I thought he was talking about the team. I go, hell no. I ain't oh. doing no Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles thing. I, I don't mind, I don't mind had, a lot of teams, player? but when you boo Santa Claus and you yeah. freaking cheer when Michael Irvin has a sur- – I mean – that's just and you have a jail in your stadium. That's they're the worst. They're the worst fan. I was the biggest Patriot fan when they were in that Super Bowl. You had some Cowboy fans going, "Oh well, the NFC East, hey, they're great." All Cowboys, like, no, I hate the Eagles. So you're but saying I love you, the band? You, you're saying that you're not a Vice Sekahema fan from the Eagles <laughs> in the '90s? I don't know what that means. Vice that Sekahema. That's a player. Don't you remember the guy that used to take a score a touchdown? He used to beat up the goalposts. No, I just remember the Cowboys uh, in the Super Bowls in the 90s, unlike the Steelers. So, we've got six. the Eagles started with me. I am, as you know, I Stevie knows, and I'm more probably like Zeus. I'm not a vinyl collector, but I do have this on my wall. If you can see that, kind of the yeah. reflection. Yeah, it's got a glare on it. I see yeah. myself. That's, all, that's off my head. So, okay, Eagles. Yeah, I see hits. myself. <laughs> Eagles yeah, right. greatest hits. Yeah. Probably the biggest. I think this has gone like 38 times platinum, some ungodly number. And I'll talk about my songs, like kind of what the the albums this means to me and stuff. But I've been a fan probably since I was little. My mom listening to this and Rod Stewart and the Stones, which they are still in my top five. And remember being a big Glenn Campbell fan and Rhinestone Cowboy and Buck Rhinestone Owens on Hee Haw. And I just told my mom I want a song, and I thought that was the guitar that Buck Owens always had when she put. The Eagles on, Rod Stewart on Stones. I was like, that's the guitar, but it's a little bit different. I mean, I had to be four when I, I was born in 72, a little bit before Murph. But every, I think I've been a fan my whole life, and I think the Eagles are some of the first music I ever heard. And, and with Vince McMahon, the story about Vince McMahon coming out, they said he paid off the women with a lot of the money that reported, you know, for WWF money. I think, I think Tommy, or is Tommy, I'm calling you Tommy, Stevie. I think we need to go back and do our top 10 list, and I think we need to redo it because I believe the Eagles belong in my top 10 list. I don't know what I was thinking. I know. Well, I say that all the time about you. Didn't but they you? weren't in your top you're 10 list either, much. dude. So, Are you sure you're not the Disco Inferno? Are you sure you're not him? Disco Inferno? <laughs> I like the song. Disco Inferno. All right. Big Man Zeus, tell us about how you got into the Eagles. All right. Thanks, Woody Page. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it came to me Alright, so I, I've talked about this on the show When we did the album review crew I picked Hotel California Which is so far still my number one album on that show Still the number one song for me on that show Now, I was uh, uh, a rambunctious high schooler uh, Murph, I, we didn't know each other Although our high schools were not even a mile apart from each other um, I, uh, had a, I became a student council treasurer as a senior. I had a campaign slogan that I put in the bathrooms of don't be a douche vote for Zeus. <laughs> now, I don't know what's worse that, that it doesn't rhyme or that I put that up there. And then the, um, the, uh, what do they call those? The hot, like not the, like the house deans that they have. Like, you put this up there. No, I don't know who put it up there. But anyway, so I I was able to get that. And what they did when you become a student council, they had a room for you. You could get your own pass. You could go to this room and hang out in between classes. You could do whatever you want in there. You had a free pass to it. So 
when I went in there, there was an old tape deck in there and it had the Eagles live on it. Mm. Now I've wow. heard hotel California. So what's there to do when you try to bring a, a freshman girl in there with you or a sophomore girl, you put some music on and uh, the Eagles live played many a times in that room. <laughs> I would be in trouble and suspended and kicked out now if they found out about it. But yeah, I used to play it. And that's where I learned about all the Eagles songs. Now, remember, we're all listening to music. We've all heard about the Eagles, but I didn't really know all their songs. I knew Hotel California. And now I'm starting to hear all their songs that are on that. Like, Wasted Time comes up when you think of Eagles Live. Um, um, uh, What's the other one? The big one from that album. Long Run comes up from that album. And so... Um, it comes out, the album comes out after the long run, their last album that they did with the original members, really. But, um, and I just fell in love with them. I went to college, I took them with me, I listened to it, and I just love the musicianship. I love the lyrics. I love that there's seven guys in the band that sing songs in that oh, band. Yeah. Oh, seven. Yeah. There's not one guy that didn't yeah. sing a song on that. Yeah. And they then they add in the sun. And Vince Gill on the tour, and they sing songs. Yeah, everybody sings songs, and everybody's got a decent voice. Even Visions by Don Felder, I think, is pretty good on one of these nights. So I can't say enough about them. I think the the songs are incredible. the The lyrics are off the charts. the The fact that you can't get bored, and because there's always two songs from this, three songs from him, one song from him. Yeah, it's incredible. And then they have the crazy rock star Ace guy. Uh, yeah, I'll do an impression for you later of Joe Walsh. <laughs> and it's just it's just an incredible band. They're in the top five for me easily. Um, they're right there. So I always say Elvis, Elvis, um, the Eagles, Zeppelin, obviously Kiss, and then uh, I don't know who I'd put fifth. George Jones, maybe. Zeus, what I actually remember is when we were in college, uh especially when it came around to the reunion tour, Hell Freezes Over. I you went were so adamant that they were the band of the 70s. Now, you have to remember, like, this was – everyone was coming out of the tail end of grunge. People were still into Zeppelin. And you kept on taking on those Friday, Saturday nights when everyone's drinking. The Eagles were the band of the 70s. And you were on an island. And yeah. I think more people are with you now. Yeah. But you yeah. have to remember to, yeah. to those watching, listening, that during the era of grunge, there'd be times when Zeus would be playing the Eagles and then one of our friends would come out of the room and one of the famous lines of, Zeus, what are you trying to do? Kill me? You're depressing me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's accurate. Um, but, I, I mean, I find uh, hard-pressed to say that the Eagles weren't bigger than Zeppelin. Or Kiss, obviously they're bigger than Kiss. Yeah, not saying better, but bigger. But yeah, their their tours, their album sales, speak for themselves, right? How many times has everybody seen them? And they've seen them live. Oh God, uh, three times. I saw them last year, and Zeus and I were across the different parts of the stadium, and we were texting each other. In absolutely incredible performance i mean you hear all this stuff about how after agent i i what what i remember from the show is i think everybody that was performing knew their limits and vince gill and deacon fry glenn son they they really exceeded my expectations it was an absolutely phenomenal show i think they played 31 songs that night and i wow. you know it was like my one and only time probably seeing them and it it is forever going to leave an impression on me yeah it was it, it, uh it's everything that Kiss should have followed. They played right. Hotel California and then threw in greatest hits after. They played Hotel California all the way through. Everything was done like the musicianship is, like I said, off the charts. Yeah. Um, every song that you could imagine that you kind of wanted. Nobody left saying, oh, what the hell? They didn't play. It's like they played just about everything, deep cuts and everything. Right. Solo so songs. It was incredible. And this is them now. Yeah. I saw them in '96. Was it on the law on the uh, Hell Freezes, Freezes Over. Over tour? And I saw them in 2018. They came through Boston. Yeah, I think I've I seen. Saw, a, oh, sorry, go, Jed. I'm sorry, I, I think I saw them four times alone on that Hell Freezes Over. After seeing, oh, wow. after seeing the MTV concert, the Unplugged, that just, I mean, that just got me so stoked. Um, and I'll tell you, thinking thinking back on that now, even though it was before, 
I, I think in my brain, I was more excited about that, that Hell Freezes Over tour than I was about the Kiss Reunion tour in 96 in, in, in my, you know, my head. Because wow. I'll tell you why, because, you know, with the Eagles reunion, you knew it was going to be great. There was no way that, that um, you know, Glenn Fry and Don Henley were not going to make that be amazing. And those guys were still players, you know, with, with the Kiss yeah. reunion. You know, you had the Ace and Peter factor. You weren't really sure what was going to happen as far as as far as that all went, how that was going to go. So, so that that tour was amazing as well. But that that hell freezes over, man. I never seen, I never seen anything like it. Like you guys are saying, I mean, the musicianship it just it just blows you away. It just blows you away that these guys can make that kind of sound incredible, just incredible. I've yeah. Seen them- one last thing I want to add on that, Joe, is I saw them that year. And yeah. they played in Boston. Yeah. And when they played in Boston, their ticket prices were like a hundred dollars exactly. in '96. Exactly. And WBCN Murph, who always hated the Eagles because they're that type, because uh, you know, they're too busy listening to the Smithereens at the time, <laughs> whatever else they were playing, um, was making fun of the Eagles at that time. Yeah. So Don Henley in the middle of the concert made a comment about assholes from something else. And during the thing, they say dirty laundry. They put the guy's phone number up on the oh, screen. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, they talk right. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy you say that because I, I saw that first show at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And I clearly remember that was the first concert I ever spent $100 for a ticket. First yeah. concert ever, $100. Like, I've ever seen Rat yeah. for 12 bucks. Bon Jovi for 14 dollars <laughs> Yeah. 100 bucks for the Eagles in 94. I bet it was. I'd have paid if I had it about it was it was more than worth it. More than I worth feel it. bad. You guys brought up this subject and I could speak on this for years and I'll try to cut back. The one last thing I want to say is there was a build up to that, Joe. When they were talking about the Kiss reunion, that kind of we were hinted at it from Unplug. Yeah. yeah. For us, country guys, because I've talked about this with you guys, Travis Tritt's video when he did and that yep. incredible album which i blasted all the time in my room that common thread album country yep. album of all those country like real country artists that were relevant at that time did that album of all those eagle songs mm-hmm. i played that nonstop and then they did the video so you're like holy shit yeah. Yeah, is exactly. this really going to happen yeah. and it built it up very similar things absolutely yep. I've have you guys there. have you guys all seen the documentary? Oh, oh yeah, several, several times. Several times. <laughs> probably probably one of the best documentaries huh? ever. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I love how they kind of start off the the second part with the Travis trip. Yeah, I yeah. remember um, seeing them. I saw them. I've seen them one and a half, and I'll explain. Oh, I saw yeah. them on the Hell Freezes Over tour, and I saw Don Henley probably about 2016. He did a solo tour. I think it's around time Glenn died. And he did like, he played a little small theater here called the Majestic. It's been around since the twenties. It's a beautiful theater. And he just, I mean, I've always been a Don Henley guy because obviously the Texas connection. And, but I remember, and and I forgot to tell Murph this earlier, he was talking about, he was more into Don Henley before he discovered the Eagles. I remember Don Henley from the Eagles, but I was all into Murph. I was all into uh, Murph. Hello. Just met you. I was all into Don Henley too. And I even, did you ever buy a Walden Woods tree? <laughs> <laughs> he used to, I bought one of those. And I used I, to go there. Yep. I, I, and I built. I planted one of those trees, and it was it was an apartment complex that they eventually went up up there, but they kept the tree. So my, I like my, the, my I wife, tree hugger there. My wife is from the town where Walden Woods resides. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're all familiar with it being in the same kind of region. Yeah. My favorite thing from that uh, documentary is when. <laughs> Glenn Fry, no one can suck the fun out of a room faster than Don. That's fucking great. So accurate. accurate. Oh my god! Oh, the time he's yelling at Felder. Oh, he goes back to take (laughs) it easy, (laughs) Mr. Felder. Mr. Felder. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. Mr. Yeah. So, fucking unbelievable. That documentary. Yes. Anybody uh, listening, uh, you need to see it. Yes. Just yes. to see the yes. dynamics. Because when Glenn, this is before Glenn died, he gave zero fucks of no. how much of an asshole he appeared on. He yep. didn't care. He admitted he was an asshole. He didn't yes, he give did. a shit. Yes, and he, he let them speak too. You know, so yeah. everyone got a fair shot. I wish Kiss would do something. Yeah, that would never happen. Oh, you don't remember the you don't remember the second coming, Zeus? You don't that was oh yeah, that's one. just as good. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I want to say, shut up, Peter. Okay. <laughs> hey, but you know right. the thing the difference between Eagles and Kiss 
there probably wasn't a Tommy Thayer involved. A Tommy Thayer involved. It had to teach like Felder, Mister Felder, and the rest how to play their instruments. Right. Oh yeah. Again. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just the musicianship with them and the harmonies oh, yeah. and the lyrics. Everybody's mm-hmm. off the charts. It's just yeah. all right. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to be. No, you're good. Over. You're good, uh, bud. You talk all you good. want to. Yeah. So for me, I my my goes about like Murph. Uh, I was into Don Henley. Uh, End of the Innocence album. Uh, top, I mean, just a great album from start to finish. And that surprises then, me, Stevie. He's from Texas. <laughs> we already talked about this. <laughs> we already talked about this. Yeah, but, you know, went from there. And then when Hell Freezes Over came out, when that started, you know, you see the Hotel California unplugged. And I was just like, what the heck was that? And start, I start listening to the back catalog, of course. I get Hotel California. Girlfriend gave it to me for Christmas. I go through that. I wear that out. And I'm just like, you know, after that, I remember my dad listened. I think he had the Long Run album. And I remember him listening to it a lot. And I never really got into it because I was such a, you know, I was a kiss toward, I guess what you'd say. I was listening to all of that back then. Uh, but, yeah, and it got into it. And they quickly, like I said, quickly become one of my one of my favorite bands. You can't, I mean, just like Zeus said, the lyrics uh, when you hear Seven Bridges Road and hear those harmonies, I'm a guy that's a sucker for a, for a ballad, and I'm a sucker for harmonies. When you hear those harmonies they can do, oh, man, it, it's, it's just awesome. But we, me and Murph were ta- and, and uh, Joe were talking before we came on about uh, a song that Timothy Schmidt did with the Beach Boys on the Beach Boys tribute album, that Caroline No and, and the harmonies there. And, uh, yeah, I'm just a sucker for stuff like that, but you know, that's how the Eagles came into my wheelhouse, and uh, they're still there. They're probably, I, I th- I'd say they're in my top five, definitely, oh. which I've never got the chance to see them live. I can't imagine what kind of atmosphere that is, how great that was. So, so does, Tim- does, does Timothy B. Schmidt and Vince Gill fight over who gets to do? I can't tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I had thought about that. You got to give it to Timothy. Though. Yeah, I, I. I wasn't a big fan of that when that came out because I wasn't really into country yet. Of course, George Strait for me. And but now I look back on it and I actually I, I love it. It's it's crazy how your music. I mean, ninety four I was all rock and, but as you mellow, I mean that. I mean that. I don't really know the name of it, but it's on my playlist. And take it easy by Travis Tritt. I mean, I don't know how to say it. I say his name wrong all the time. That's a great cover version. You said Travis Tritt's name wrong. Did I say Tritt or Twit or? Trit. Trit. I, mean, Trit. I said Dallas, Tr- Dallas, Tra- Dallas. Travis, uh, Travis uh, Trisquit or whatever. Trit. <laughs> Trisquit. 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 But Trisquit. see, for me, that's, that's where, you know, I went through that eight, getting to kiss at five. And then I listened, you know, of course, my mom was listening to Elvis all the time. I, I had kiss and Elvis on the brain. So, but then, you know, like I've said many times on the show, one year, my birthday, birthday money, I go get kiss animalized. Prince Purple Rain, nice. new edition, self-titled album. So, I mean, I was all over the globe with that. But, you know, I was always, it wasn't one kind. The only thing I did boycott in the 80s, I boycotted country music in the 80s. I was like, nope, can't do it. But once Garth Brooks came out, that changed everything for me. But that's a, that's another story for another show. But tonight, we are given our top 10 e- favorite Eagle songs of all time. And like I said, you know, Guys, if you're watching this, you're listening to this, give us your list. If you don't agree, let us know, but it's our list, so it can't be wrong. No matter what it <laughs> says, it can't be wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, I'm going to get some looks tonight from Zeus, and I'll probably get them from uh, I know everybody, I everybody but Joe. I think Joe, me and Joe are probably on the same wavelength there. Did y'all already share each other's list? Is that no, why? We have There's no cheating on it. There's no <laughs> cheating. When I tell you, this is no exaggeration, I prepared for this podcast more than probably the SATs. No word of lie. I I went through the entire (laughs) Eagles catalog. I didn't want to miss a song. It's been so long because I was telling Stevie, the one thing I hope that this podcast, not only is it fun, but it gets out to the people. I want people to know the brilliance of this band. I I really want them to appreciate how incredible that they are because I, I love this band more than I love most people in my life. So that's... That's how huge it's so <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, I, I feel bad. Damn. I know. 
So you're not the big Lebowski. I'm loving this already. Let me go ahead and say this, too. Uh, I'm going to get a little plug in for uh, the album focus on the Shout Out Loudcast. If you want to listen to one of the best episodes of the Shout Out Loudcast that's not dealing with Kiss, go back and listen to the album review of Hotel California. Yeah. I will say this. We, I was listening to it. Uh, I had to carry my wife for a procedure she had done at the hospital. On the way back, I said, do you mind if I listen to these guys? And she was like, no, I don't care what you listen to. And she was like, oh, my God, what are, what are they talking about? It says Hotel California. And she's, you know, she knows that the Eagles would know. But she was like really, really listening to you guys then. And, and she's like, who is this guy talking? I said, that's some crazy asshole. You've got, you got, you got a fake name named Zeus. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, one of the best episodes you guys ever did at the album. And I'll say the best album focus episode you ever done. And I maybe I'm biased a little bit with the Hotel California. I'm definitely biased. Definitely. But it wasn't that heat one they did. Yeah, heat. Yeah, heat. Yeah, God no. <laughs> that's a good album. That's, yeah, that's a good album. I'm 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 on sunny side. I'm sorry. It's a good album. <laughs> yeah. Go. I, I try. I try. I try. Hotel California Heat Two. Yeah, there no, should be the same no, sentence no, no, together. No, 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 not 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 same sentence. Definitely not. Yeah, that album that album review was excellent. There was Murph I'll, on I'll, that episode. I'll say this about it: there was a couple, there was a few good songs on Heat, but I and I gave Sonny credit for those. I, I messed I like with it. There's a few of them, but I like it. Are we are we losing time talking about hotel <laughs> the Eagles to talk about Heat <laughs> too? Right, right. What right. are we doing? Sonny Pony would be proud. Okay. All Thank right. No, no. Let's get. I can't let's everyone picked. I, I'm so I'm so excited to see what you guys picked. I can't. If I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Like, let's let's just. All right. Please. This is like Damn, a kid. Joe, like a kid. Yeah, yeah, Joe Decker. <laughs> Woo. All yeah, right. So we'll get, let's let's get. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> let's get it started, and we we always start off with our guests first. Only on Here's only on guest. this podcast will you see a Boston Red Sox fan. Give a compliment to a New York Yankees fan. We have broken ground here, people. There you yeah. go. There you go. The next yeah. step, Stevie's going to give my Cowboys a compliment. It's next week. Bullshit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Murph, you lead us off, bud. All right. Well, so going through the list, went through every album, sent a quick text to Zeus going, hey, you know, how's your list coming along? Uh, I, I've gone through in my list that I got to whittle down. I've got 17 songs. Oh. And Zeus goes, I got 17 too. I was like, oh my God. So this got me all pumped up. And then, <laughs> you know, as we were talking before we, we started recording, I mean, it was, I was down 11 and it was really hard to pin it down. But what was great about getting ready for this made me realize that what and I think is going to be apparent of there's a certain sound of the Eagles that I am drawn to. And that's going to be evident as we go through this, but starting off with number 10 from the earlier years, peaceful, easy feeling. Uh, All right. Peaceful, easy feeling from her. All right. So Zeus has been on here three times. Decker's only been on here twice. So we'll let Decker go. Joe Decker go next. All right. I, He's like a kid in a candy store up there. I really am. I did not have that song, Murph, on my list, um, but I love it. it. I was telling Stevie earlier, I, ne- I, w- I narrowed down to 35 songs, and then I painfully, like, <laughs> it, it was brutal. I, I, I yeah. love all their songs. But number 10, I picked just because this song was my kind of my intro to the Eagles. I didn't know it was Eagles when I first heard it. Um, my mom would crank this song in the car on the radio in the house, and that would be "Take It to the Limit." Hmm. Take it to the limit. Take it nice. to the limit. Wasn't he? Wasn't he scared to sing that song in concert? It wasn't that part of the documentary they were talking about. He was scared to sing it in concert. He didn't do it anymore for some. I think he was. He yep. The call that was sing it. You know, and forced him to do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it in the encore. And yeah. I, I remember actually a uh, quick tangent. I think my son was maybe about 11 or 12 and the song was playing in the car and just at the end where they kept doing it. Over and over. And, and, and my son just goes, I think they've taken this song to the limit. I had no comeback. I'm like, yeah, yeah you're right. That's yeah. great. That's <laughs> funny. All right. Next up, Zeus. All right. This was my hardest. Where to pick... Because something got cut off. Oh, yeah. 
So let me make sure that I'm not missing this and that I don't get this song and be like, oh shit, can I change it? Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Number 10. I'm going to go with this one. It's a little bit of a sad day here. And uh, the sad cafe. Oh, I can, I can, I sing that song to myself in the car all the time. The, <laughs> it's just a beautiful song. And you, and you have to lower your, your, your voice and the register a little. Don is singing it in a little bit different, not as high. Yeah. But it's so beautiful, and the lyrics are out of this world. The harmonies on it, and it's on probably the I don't know most uh, underrated album of theirs. And it gets a lot of shit because they had a come in after Hotel California. But the long run is Robert. such an incredible album. Yeah, yes, uh, the Sad Cafe, uh, and I forget who sings it on Common Thread. Love their version as well. So that's my number ten. Nice. You think about the pressure. Of following up a Hotel California, can't even imagine, and then to come out and knock it out of the park like with with the long run. I mean that could. I mean, but wait a minute, wait a minute. There's more to that. The fact of the matter is, the Eagles' greatest hits and all these people that buy and say, "Oh, it's the biggest album of all time." Came out before Hotel California. Yeah. That's what's yeah. so insane. That is insane. Then, and they were trying to build up some time. Then Hotel California comes up. There was a, f- a certain period of months, several months, that, th- that the Eagles were selling a million albums between Hotel California and Eagles Greatest Hits. A million albums a month. That's insane. That is. Wow. That is not surprising. There. So, Warden. Can't wait to hear this number 10. Well, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. Go ahead, I buddy. think it's so low. My my eight, my eight, 9 and my 10 are great songs, and I love them, but they're so low because I've heard them so many damn times. And this number 10 almost didn't make my list, but talking to you, Steve, the other day, I, it, it made my list. Uh, working title was Mexican Reggae. Was this song about the devil or cocaine? <laughs> and one thing funny about this album, when they were recording it, evidently Black Sabbath was next door, and they were so much loud that I think it, it they um, and one of the other tracks, the last track, I think it was, um, I forget the last song on the album. Last resort. Know what, yeah, they had to go and record it somewhere else. And Black Sabbath, I think it was Technical Ecstasy, which they were by Ozzy was off the rails more. But they actually um, thought that they could out party the Eagles, and I don't know if Glenn Fry or Don Honey says that they thought they could out be louder than us, but we drank them under the table. <laughs> Hotel California is my number ten, oh. and it, it's got to be number ten just because it's overplayed. But oh, shut it, up. It's, it's funny how three got how, how three guys in it riding it. You know, he, there's a great interview with Howard Stern that uh, Mr. Felder does. Yep, uh, uh, he's talking about he's on his is beach in Malibu as like listen to the ocean, writing the words to this. And then Henley and Fry come in and fix it. You got three guys that aren't even for California that probably oh, write yeah. the most iconic California song. Maybe it's California dreaming. I don't know. I mean, it's, I Hotel Cal- it had to be on there. It just, I mean, I love the, the live version. I love the, um, hell for old version. I love the astronaut. And you think of hotel California, you look at the track listing, they could have called that greatest hits part two. Yeah, yeah, I mean it, it's yeah. it's freaking I'm amazing. Bottom, all yeah. this, yeah, exactly. But this one made it. This one made it. But it's funny that I don't. It's on mine. I. It's not the only uh, song on the album that made it to my top ten list. So, Sticker, are we gonna? Uh, are we gonna? Uh, if we have that number, are we gonna say where we have? Yeah, it? we'll just wait till we get to it. Just wait okay. till you get to it. Okay. So I, I, I can't imagine it being on anybody else's <laughs> list. <laughs> no. So Zeus, Lori Morgan was the one that sang "Sad Cafe" on. Commentary. Beautiful. That's yeah, 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 she, she was, was uh, not hot. pretty, not very hot at during those times, huh? You don't Ooh. think so? No, I'm joking. Oh, that was sarcasm. God damn, <laughs> it's a lot better than what an uh, Pittsburgh Steeler fan would have got or Ooh. player. Oh, god, you know, she dated, go. right? Yeah, so, she dated yeah. everybody, and, and she, she didn't killed? date him. I think he banged her in the back <laughs> of a limo <laughs> right yeah. after he got through with Novacek. Kind of like he did that with uh, the with the uh, I keep saying Eagles. I'm going to leave the out of it. No trash talking about the great <laughs> Troy Aikman, okay? 
you brought it up. So anyway, my hmm. number ten, and Zeus will love this. Is a random. Oh my god, I can't believe he's not. I'm just getting Randy ready. Randy Miser song from Disco Strang. I'm gonna mute you again, <laughs> but it's not the one you think it is. It's uh, Hotel California. Try and love again. Love uh, that Yes, it's an awesome song. And and the more I looked at it, doing the research of it, and you can, you know, they asked him to write a song, and he was dealing with a divorce at the time, and this was, I mean, this is all emotion from Randy Miser right here. And he hits it out of the park. I mean, I remember the first time hearing it, and I was like, whoa, this isn't Henley, this isn't Fry. This guy's got an incredible voice. And, uh, but yeah, you can feel that emotion in it. And it's like it, what, it's his last contribution to the band before he left the next year. Yep. So he went out with a bang. He did. But yeah, Love yeah. That. Try and Love Again is my number 10. Love it. Good, Love great it. song. Great song. Murph loves that song. We see all love that Might song. See you later. Oh, man. I was torn between um, Take It to the Limit and that song. I wanted to get a, some Randy songs in there. And that was, that was a tough one. They almost made my list too. It was almost there. Yeah. All right, number nine, Murph. All right, so this is a song that if we were doing this episode a year ago, I don't think it would have even been in my top 15, but I have listened to this song without question more than any other Eagle song over the last year. So my number nine from Desperado is Doolin Dalton. Doolin Dalton, Sweet. Wow. All right, I'm keeping up with you guys on here. We'll see how many repeats we have on this. All right. So, Decker. All right, this one. Nine. It's got a short story, but I think it's it's relevant because it's a really weird song choice for me. So, it's one of those moments, you know, we all remember when things certain happened. So, I remember clearly the day that, that I heard that Glenn Fry had died. And and here's how I found out. I was, I was driving. I got my car to go to work in the morning, driving to work, just your FM radio and um, – uh, my song was on. Uh, Lion Eyes happened to be on. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll let this play. You know, the next song that came on though was a song that I I had never really heard before. And I could tell it was him singing. I'm like, why are they playing this song? This isn't a, a single or anything. You know, when the song was done playing, that's when I heard for the first time that he that he that he had died. And I was like, holy smokes, you know. And the song that they played was a song off of the Long Road Out of Eden album called No More Cloudy Days. It's a beautiful song. That no one's probably ever heard, but I picked it for that reason because that was the song that I heard the morning I found that out, and it's it's a really it's a beautiful that song. Is. Um, and it's an obscure pick, but that was why I chose it because it was it resonates with me in that way. Dad, uh, I just got through. You know, I, I, some of you are aware I do that album challenge where I listen to. I tried. It started off three. I wanted to listen to an, a full album every day at least one a day every day of the year and it's now it's grown into like i'm in two years and i'm on like almost on an album of a thousand but i just listened the long road out of eden the other day again and yeah no more cloudy day that gets played where i work all the time does it really yes yeah wow, wow. Yes. so yeah that is a great song I, that, that's Beautiful a deep song. pick too good Beautiful. pick there i like that pick Beautiful. i've never i honestly haven't heard that song but i go back and listen you need to check it out you really need to check it out Ward. it's good it, it, when uh, I heard it come on, it just blew my mind. Think, why are they playing this? You know, yeah, that's not something you'd hear ever. You know, and no, uh, that's not something you would think you'd hear on the radio. Never mm -hmm. in a million years. This, the, my Is boss that, man, my boss man's got like a beach music or R and B kind of feel <laughs> to him, and he 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 has a. Oh, I can't. I get, he has something made like a CD made to play in there or a playlist made in there plays over. It. Yeah, so I, I some of them I enjoy, but that that's one of them I do enjoy. One thing about uh, Glenn Fry, kind of Joe talking about when he died, they were saying that he had what rheumatoid arthritis, and I read somewhere it's not so much the the it's not so much the disease that kills you, it's the medication, because oh, it's yeah. so so just tough on the uh, it's like kind of I guess chemo with cancer patients. Yeah, but I, I never I never knew that, but it's just like yeah that was and I knew he was sick and stuff, but I didn't know that because there was talk about them doing another tour with him. So I don't yep. know if it was unexpected death or what, but yeah, he was in the, I remember reading, he was in the hospital for a bit, but I don't think they were yeah. expecting him to pass. Right. You guys on a shout out loud need to do the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, D bag, I guess the, the pandemic Paul and the Glenn Fry. Cause they seem like buddies, like those pictures <laughs> of them together. And Glenn it's like, 
Yeah, it, it they uh, since like what what uh, Zeus was talking about him not apologizing for being an asshole. It's like maybe that's why him and Paul got along so well. Well, and I I'm think, a Paul guy, so hey. No, but I think uh, Glenda is at least honest. That's the whole point. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I think Pandemic exactly. Paul was like just preaching shit to just uh, yeah, you know, to get recognition and and compliments. But yeah, Glenn Fry was just Glenn Fry. He didn't give a shit. Honest. He yeah. didn't care. Didn't care. Right. That was cool when they came out in the makeup with uh, Tupac and the Eagles were there clapping. That was that was that's like I always see that like it's like them like. I remember, I remember that night watching. I was on the phone with a girl, and when Kiss walked out, when Tupac was out there, I did all I could say was "Holy shit!" And the girl was like, "What are you talking about?" And I put the I put the phone down, and she was like, "Hello, hello." I was like, "Oh, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I got to call you back." So yeah, I was I was so disappointed, and I'm one of the few because my favorite band had just ended and. That's another, oh, yeah. that's another podcast. Yeah, I can understand that. But number nine for you, Zeus, he's talking about Kulik and Singer with <laughs> the Revenge Era. Gotcha. Gotcha. He knew that. He knew that. So number nine for me, I'm going to go deep cut uh, like Murph. I'm going off Desperado album, but I'm going 21. Ooh, yeah. Nice call, Zeus. Good, yeah, good one. I absolutely uh, love uh, the album. I love uh, that Bernie Ledin doesn't get any recognition. <laughs> and he's that fucking good, though. Yeah. Um, I think he's such a great talent. And the fact is that he was on their first four albums. Yeah. Right? Nobody ever talks about that guy. Yeah. Talks about that guy. And when you really think of the Eagles, it's the first, what, six? If you think about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first six albums. He was on four of them. Yeah. Wow. Friggin nobody, Joe it, Walsh is on two. You yeah, know? Think about, no, everybody, everybody always says Joe Walsh though, because he was, you know, Bernie Lid Lidden didn't get the attention because I guess he wasn't as crazy as Joe Walsh was, but I mean because he was more what, of a country folk kind yeah, of yeah. uh like you know, alt rock kind of uh a musician. Hey, hold on, hold on a sec. Joe Walsh, can you maybe speak as to why Bernie doesn't get the necessary attention? <laughs> you want me to do the Joe Walsh yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, um, Bernie brought in a banjo. I don't play banjos. That stuff's insane. Next thing you know, they're smashing it over each other's heads. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Um, that whole banjo on that thing kicks ass. And he yeah. does that on a lot of songs that I really like him. Never mind the fact he's got a really good voice. Uh, he plays his instrument. He's a great musician and gets no love. But I think 21 is so good. And yeah. it just, you know, it's, it's a concept album. There's there's a point to these songs. Exactly. So and that's a that's a sound that a lot of new country is missing, if you ask me. But that's just yeah. my high horse for liking the old stuff. Yep. All right. Warden, we're at your okay. number nine. Evie, you need to get Zeus. Doing a, a Joe Walsh intro for the show because that's gold. <laughs> okay, number nine is a hit from hell. Like I said, my first two are overplayed, but I had to put this one on my top ten list because it's 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 it came out the year I was born, 19, 1972. Mm. It's the first Eagle song I ever heard, and I don't know if it was off the greatest six greatest hits because it was song one or the self title because it was song one. It's called Take It Easy. And we were talking about that, Stevie, about how this song wouldn't be on your list, probably because, you know, it's a hit from hell. Like, you know, like yeah. a lot of them won't be on mine. But I, when Travis Tritt did this, I thought it was freaking blasphemy. How dare you wow, really? touch the wow. Eagles? No, you, I was more in, I was a hair guy. I mean, of course, I like George Strait because I'm in Texas and it's in the Bible. But I mean, I hated country. And like at the time, I and how Stevie is about the 80s, I was about the early 90s. Then a little girl from Canada came down singing Any Man of Mine. Oh, and, was like, sure okay. and I discovered her and I worked in an office full of women and they were playing all this like crap. Because of the voice. And I, <laughs> yeah, she was okay. Mutt singing Def Leppard Leftovers. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. yeah exactly. Yeah. Just had a little banjo in the middle there and then yeah. that's it. And then I went back, listened to Travis. 
as I matured, I love the song now. I mean, I wouldn't put it against the original because they're two different versions. Yeah. But looking at it when I first saw it and them all playing with them, I was like, how dare you? I mean, it was just like blasphemy to me, but I've come around and grown up. So it's, see now it's this song. was when that came out, I was big into country music and I talk about Garth changed everything for me. The second one that I got into was Travis Tritt. That yeah. was like Travis could do no wrong back then at that time. And you know, Travis, that that's that's another episode as well for tr what a yeah. Travis Tritt episode. But, that one we've been waiting yeah. to do, and yeah. Yeah, I hear you, Zeus. So but, it's funny that video came out where you like, who the hell is that guy? I couldn't no, I, find Don Felder. I, I didn't understand. Who's the guy with the beard? Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. I was like, who's, who's that guy? Yeah, yeah, right. Fry, it was easy to spot Fry and, and Henley. And then you know, everybody, I remember Timothy Smith with the long, long hair. But yeah. then I was like, yeah, I was like that dude. So I was like, who is that guy? Yeah. But, yeah. Wasn't Don Felder selling like real estate at the time or something? He looked like a real estate agent. But Joe uh, Walsh just was know. just Joe Walsh. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So, yeah. so take it easy. First song I ever heard by the Eagles. I love it. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it my number nine. I'm gonna keep it in the Hotel California family. Uh and this is a song that I remember hearing it for the first time and I was like, you know, okay. It grew on me and it's grown into it's really grown on me. Life in the fast lane. Oh um, yeah, the song about the the couple looking for you know, the drug dealer and I the story behind it where Fry said he was he was in the car with a drug dealer buddy of him, and he said, "You know, oh, you need to slow down." He said, "Man, it's life in the fast lane," and yeah, it's so, yeah, and, and they do a great job of that. The, the the harmonies on the chorus, I love those when they start singing back "Life in the Fast Lane." I love that, and Henley just does a great job. I remember as a kid, I, I actually my dad must have listened to it because I remember as a kid hearing Henley say, "Been on this road so long, I hadn't seen a." God damn thing and uh yeah i was like oh boy and my daddy looked at me like don't don't sing that in front of your mom or anything like that but yeah yeah but yeah life in the fast lane is my number nine i that, love that it's pretty cool uh, how sorry sorry the no, uh, go ahead go ahead the warm-up you know that that the intro was yeah, doing yeah. a warm-up and that's similar to what yeah. slash was doing with sweet child of mine playing it slash was playing a circus circus yeah just warming and up in the, and then uh while she's playing a riff and they go We've got to turn that into a song. We've got to put the lyrics to this. And it, it's just amazing how some of it comes together like that. This how many famous was, lyrics are in this song? How many lines in the people? mirror, lines yes. on the face. Oh, yes. Just it's a great song. It is really when I was going over, you know, going over the songs and narrowing it down, I said, I've got to get this in somewhere. It's just you know, the more I and you know what? I like like Murph said, he's talking about. You know, Dula Dalton might not have been his list a, 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 a year ago. You know, this song might not be in my list come two weeks from now. It's yeah. just so many great songs the Eagles have. I was Go listening ahead. to I was listening to Hell Freezes Over today, and they were playing the live version. Mm -hmm. And I love Don Henley when he says, and he was brutally handsome, y'all. <laughs> that little, <laughs> he says that. I catch that. That's pretty that funny. Texas stuff. Yeah, there. you got it, brother. Yeah, I got you. I knew you had to throw that in there. Y'all kick-ass right. group today. <laughs> All right, Murph, what you got at number eight? All right, so for number eight, and, and Jason, I think, you know, similar to what you were mentioning, I, I don't think this is just fatigue or overplay. It's just over time I've just come to, I've been drawn to other songs that rank higher in the list, but for number eight, yeah. it's Hotel California. Okay. Okay. Ah. Got you there. Mexican reggae. What album is that from? What Number album eight. is that? Yeah, what album is that from? Uh, I think I that's on uh, Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> on Mass. Sonic Boom. <laughs> Sonic. Boom. <laughs> All right. De Joe Decker. What you got at number eight, bud? Number eight. Okay. Number eight song. I picked this song because um, a couple reasons, but mainly because of the outro guitar solo on this song. Um, when I was a younger guitar player, I, had, I used to be one of those kids that wanted to play fast all the time, just shred, 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 you know? And one day, a very be penny this, uh huh? You know, <laughs> not, not like that. Not like that. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to be with you. I think anyone could play a guitar like Vinny Vince, but, but never mind. Um, Woo! Bless you, man. It's just, just pick a string and just, just do this as fast as you can. Um, 
But I had a guy tell me who played, who was a piano player, who was like genius level musician. He's like, listen, he goes, slow down. He's like, when you're crafting a guitar solo, make it like a conversation, make it a call and a response and a call and a response. Don Felder does that all the time and it's brilliant. And he does it at the end of this song. I can't tell you why that outro. Oh, yes. It's no, Joe, like, please tell us. No, no, you can tell us. It's like, <laughs> I can't tell you. What. It's like you're hearing a conversation almost. And when you watch the live version of that from the Hell Freezes Over, and he's playing that outro solo, he is so happy. The smile on his face, because that pocket that they give him the play over as a guitar player, you you can't beat that pocket. That's what that's what you dream of playing over, you know? Is that song on Common Threads, Zeus? What? I can't uh, tell the, you why. The one by Vince Gill? Yeah, that's on, uh, I thought, on Common Thread, yeah. I think that's the first song I heard on there that kind of started breaking the ice for me with that because I love yeah, that that's version. Good. Vince Gill does. God, he, did a great, he did a great version of that. Vince Gill was everyone in the 90s. Good oh, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good Lord. He, could everyone. he didn't let it slipping away, man. He didn't let that didn't slip let away. Let start slipping away. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> loved it when I, all of a sudden he played that on, on the Eagles concert. That's my, that? that's my favorite song by him. Wow. And he plays that with the Eagles. That's awesome. It's on the Eagles live. I have that. That the last one that just came out. Yeah. And that's the great thing about the Eagles. Can you imagine, you know, Kiss on the reunion tour breaking into Into the Night? I mean, that never happened. You know? uh, well, how many Joe Wall songs were on that tour? Yeah, I know. I mean, like five solo songs, yeah. probably. And you talk about two of the biggest egos with Henley and, and uh Yeah. Ray. But they let I mean they they weren't afraid to let that happen because okay. they're secure in their secure in their music. Let's be honest though. How many times, Murph, did you go, where the fuck is Don Henley? <laughs> Half the concert, if he's not really playing, he's off. Yep. He's oh, off yeah. stage. Yeah. It's his gig. He owns yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. So he's enjoying this, and he plays when he wants to play. I'm just. It's kind of like Ace now, where he plays with the two other guitars. I'll yeah. jump in on this chord, <laughs> under this one here, because he's got an awesome <laughs> band backing him up. Exactly. And that's what. Sure. That's what. And I'm an ace guy. Doing. I know that. Yeah, cool. and um, I, I just think Don Henley wasn't around for much, so he doesn't care. Yeah, why don't you? Did uh, he do, Joe, take he, this. Did he do any like like his solo stuff like Last Worth this even? Because he didn't do that here, and I was so hoping he he would, I, but he didn't. The, the ones that he usually does is like Dirty York Laundry, um, yeah. what's Boys the, of New York Minute. Yeah. Uh, Boys of Summer. Yeah. I mean, I just I, remember Joe Walsh when he was doing that guitar part in Dirty Laundry and. I don't know if he was still drinking at the time, but man, that boy's having a good time. It was funny. Was oh, so you you up. like you like Last Worth this evening? Did, Lord, oh, I love that. I love that whole oh, end of the innocence song. Right. It's gonna snow. We we both like that song. That's a great right. tune. That's I a mean, great album. That That's a great album. Mutant Smurf. They used to blast that in Heart of the Matter constantly yeah. at the yeah. end of at the end of Pit South. I forget what song of his, but for, uh, I think it might have been Last last worthless evening he wrote that for michelle pfeiffer oh oh okay oh damn really I, I think there might have been one song in there yeah i remember uh that album cover yeah. where it he would look different because he had the ponytail and yeah. he's sitting there squatting smoking the cigarette i used to think that was so freaking cool what, that what dude was, is a badass when it was crazy when he had the long straight hair i'm like the guy had a yeah, exactly. in the 70s. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's got it. these rings it's down, like frizzies, like man. Vein. Frizzies. He was trying to live, with, be with the times, but he was trying <laughs> to get with the times. Yeah. You remember seeing him on Saturday Night Live when he did that? Did his Saturday Night Live performance? He was on no. Saturday Night Live, and oh, this was back when Saturday Night Live was really. But they had Spade, they had Farley. Oh, so he was doing at last work. It was la yeah, he was All doing. Right Oh, yeah. vaguely, vaguely. Now I'm going to. Yes, he was on there. Thanks. I remember because I was like, I was shocked he was on there. I was like, so, John so Henley we, on there. We learned tonight Michelle Pfeiffer, was he with Patty, the girl he did that song with that she Patty eventually Smythe. married John McEnroe? Oh, wow. Uh, she so was smoking. Loving. You think she it's from Scandal? Patty's not. Gosh, she was hot too. That's a great She's song. married yeah. to that ugly little midget. McEnroe. <laughs> yeah, but this is before. This is early, uh, early 90s. What's his before name they, there? McEnroe. Uh, Paul John. Simon. Oh, I, no, that's the girl from uh, Edie Burkell. Edie Burkell. Yeah, that was Edie Burkell. Yeah. Oh, Which she's not married I, to him? No, uh, she's she married was. to John McEnroe. Oh, another fucking idiot. That's who she married? Hey, they're doing something right, I guess. Yeah, he's been with him for a while, too. 
Edie yeah. Brickell is the girl that sings Same. what? What I, I am, am is what I am. I yes. Yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. That was about it. That was about it, too. Yeah. After that. Yeah. I mean, I was not a big Edie Brickell fan, but Edie so, number, number eight for Zeus. Um, number eight, I mentioned it early in the intro. Wasted time is oh, such a unbelievable, beautiful song. Um it's the lyrics are off the charts, you know. You can't hold your man. Uh, you know, sometimes to keep it together, you gotta leave it alone. Oh my yes, god. Yeah. And, and the the vocals, the live version on Eagles Live is incredible. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's yeah. just the lyrics are so poignant. And it's just again, this isn't fucking shandy. Okay, <laughs> this is real music not, and it's real not lyrics. Girl either. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hey, I'm kind of glad that I'm not kind of sad. Shandy's about as close to the Eagles as they get. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know because that's kind of a that's an Eagle ass song. That's guess what's trying to do. I think. can you imagine, island. dude? Can you Eagles imagine the sound of that corny? Can you imagine it's not, if, it's uh, not that bad of a song, bro? It's a great song. What songs? Shandy? Yeah, Let's and Torpedo Girl. Shandy. Shandy's okay. <laughs> torpedo Girl. Can you imagine? Oh, torpedo if, Girl. Oh, can you imagine if waste, silly? <laughs> can you imagine if waste of time start off with? Man, Battle Station Torpedo. Man, Battle Station Torpedo. Hey, I've said that joke before. Like it, uh, no, no, it's called Hotel California. It starts like this. Okay, well, it's called Life in the Fast Line. Hey, I got a song. It's called <laughs> Torpedo Girl. What, what's it about? It's going to start off like, like this. Battle Station. <laughs> what? You know, you, know, you know, Stevie, you're an ace guy. It's yeah. not my fault I couldn't come up with 10 worst style songs. That's from Ace. That's why I, I had to pick I'm Torpedo Girl. Guy, but Torpedo Girl is just downright silly. But that's that's <laughs> one of his best, <laughs> yes, All right. I will I'm say this, to... though, Jason, in your defense. <laughs> um, our buddy uh, Tom Dust did the intro for us at one point, and he did it with Torpedo Girl. He just played the guitar. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, holy shit, this is actually a pretty good riff. But he ruined it with those lyrics and stuff. But it's the riff isn't bad, so I'll give him that. Yeah, the riff. I mean, I'm just not a. I'm just not an ace guy. So when you start talking about going swimming in the bay and a freaking submarine comes up with a pretty girl on the, I don't know. Come on, really? Could it be? I don't know. Stevie, 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 maybe you're looking for you know, you know, Charlie Sunkiss Tune or Aquaman, but we're thinking about girls, dude. So that's that's all I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, when a girl just comes up with a submarine out of the water. I, it's right. not my it's not my fault ace doesn't have more than you know nine good songs sorry That's oh come on now don't come even now. please come on oh now. you're getting show upset yeah, yeah. You, got, you got fusion tech after you hey got. but isn't that something paul stanley was saying i'm a paul guy so hey there you go yeah keep on paul keep that's on. all right i think i i think i might be with you jason you're all set brother <laughs> all right <laughs> Guess get right to you, Warden. The torpedo right. girl is not on this list. I hope. No, it's not. It's not. But the guy that wrote this song, every song. Okay, this is a cover, and every he's wrote some. Wrote Hello, wrote. He's wrote. Yeah, go on, Ace. Go on, Ace. He's, he's written, written some good music. <laughs> he has written some great songs, but every cover version of it is a lot better than the original. And Glenn Fry, and I don't think they played this much till like 2000. Glenn Fry was talking. He goes, when he first heard this song, he hated it. Oh no! Then he got the check. Now, me and Tom Waits hang out all the time. Old 55. I'm That's awesome. awesome. Song. What a song! What that. album is that off? Remind me. Uh, on the border. I on the border. Okay. Which is another one of the best albums, if not top three, I think, from them. Unbelievably yeah, underrated, is. and I was and I was looking at I was looking this up, you know, doing my research. Man, there are a lot of a, a lot of people have covered this song. Uh, who's that girl? I will remember you. Sarah McLaughlin has covered it. Yep. I haven't heard it, but I, they were showing like the versions of who's covered it. A lot of artists have covered it. Just a, it's a deep track, great song. I can't believe you picked that song. I I I agonized over that song to make this list. I'm so happy someone did. Stevie's oh. probably never heard it, so it's it's a deep oh, track. Shut so. up, Warren. Shut up. I've heard it. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, hey, I'm going to put you on that playlist that you don't like, remember? Hey, the best the name of it. The Zip best compilation, if you're an Eagles fan, is go get the very best of the Eagles. That has yeah. basically everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
there's something on Apple Music that has like everything, including the live albums. Yeah. And I was and I was listening to something and it was something from 2018. And they started playing I Can't Tell You Why. And I guess Glenn uh Glenn Fry. Um Vince was singing this song. I go, where the hell's Timothy B. Smith? And I was I guess they trade off on it, but it was like, oh wow, he was doing that song. It's pretty cool. No, no, I take that back. He was doing oh fifty five. Duh, that's what we're talking about. Jeez. And Vince was Vince was doing it. Shut up, Stevie. Go listen to the song for the first time, brother. You know, and um, it's Prescott over there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and sorry, you know, you have this effect on me, Stevie. I guess you make me tongue tied. But um, oh fifty five, yeah, Vince. Is was that a positive like, thing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of worried about that. How do you think I got the gig, <laughs> Zeus? <laughs> you got you and Stevie got tongue tied. <laughs> I'm kind of worried about that one, Zeus. <laughs> Yeah, all right, right. Woo. I so love old, that song. Great pick, Jason. Thank you, sir. Old 55. And this Beautiful. one, I'm this is probably one of the ones I'm thinking I might take a beat on. The first one's I'm gonna take a beat on, but this is one of the newer songs. It's from Long Road Out of Eden. Uh, no, no, no too no. busy being fabulous. Okay, good. Yes, I love okay, that. That's song. a good song. Uh, and, and how many how many music videos do you get with Joe Walsh with in a, in a suit with a monkey as his partner in there? I mean. Come on. But yeah, I just love I love the chorus. Too busy being fabulous, too busy to think about us. Uh and you know, there was another there was a couple of other songs like we talked about No More Cloudy Days was on that album. But yeah, Too Busy Being Fabulous is definitely a standout for me on that album. I hope I don't piss anybody off here, but when you said it's something new, I thought you were gonna start that song about the hole in the sky or I mean hole in the oh. Hole in the world. And that's a great message. It's a great message. Don't get me wrong, but I was like they thinking. Sing it, they, do, they do kind of over. That's like take it to the limit. They they talk it's, about you, hole in the world a lot. Talk about syrupy. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not a bad yeah. message. I agree with a lot of it saying, but, you know, it's typical, you know, Don Henley wrote that song, so. All right. Fabulous was just fabulous. Fabulous. So uh, fab can I give you guys a little bit of hint? Yes. There, there is no fucking uh, uh, wish you know, when you wish upon the stars in the Eagles catalog, there is none of that shit. There is, there's better songs, right? But there is nothing like, Oh, that song is fucking horrendous. I, at least as far as I'm concerned, yeah. there's some overindulgence, the shit that's on long road of Eden. Um, that sometimes you're like, what the hell is this? I get it. <laughs> you guys have good harmonies. Yeah. But you yeah. know, does it really need to be on an album starting off? No more walks in the woods. I mean, it's a poem. Leave it like that. I don't need you guys harmonizing lyrics to a poem with no music. It, okay, Glenn Johns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm being a cranky old bastard. But there really isn't anything that I'm going to say to anybody. Everyone's got an opinion that I'd be like, "Oh, that's fucking terrible." Oh, no, look, I would be disappointed if you did. No, but it's the Eagles catalog. There's they yeah. have seven real oh yeah, eight, so, eight so many great albums. Yeah, right. So it's not yeah. a catalog of twenty where you're definitely gonna have a bunch of bad songs. All right, moving right along, Murph, you're number seven. All right, my number seven, and what I, what I realize is that you know I have a few kind of random songs in this list, but uh, you know I don't know if it's can you say you're really drawn to the hits when you've got, oh, this album sold 38 million copies. This one sold 20 million. It's like if it's a good right. song and you got a connection to it, and, and ultimately that's what actually, you know, the top 10 that I have, I, I've got a personal tie to, to all of them. Um, exactly. And, and this is one that I think gets, you know, a lot of people roll their eyes, but it, I, I just will never turn the, the knob on it. It's uh, Lion Eyes. Love wow. It. Love it. Great song. That's a that's a country song from a woman's perspective, sang by a man. That's what I always described it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit too. I I'll think it's a sister's sister song of peaceful, easy feeling. I think yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, that's a good harmony. I thought about that. The harmonies are, are, are kind of on point. Um, but yeah, it's I mean the Eagles can pull that off and yeah. they can pull it off live with their harmonies. That's the big difference. And that's a song that's been played the hell of, but I never get tired of it. Nope. Uh, that, yeah, exactly. Um, who was it did that? 
Diamond Rio did it on the Common Thread album. And that's another group that I love right now. Was Diamond yeah, Diamond Rio is pretty good. Yeah, I got to see them in concert a, just two or three years ago. They do a great job. But uh, that yeah, beautiful- like I, said, I guarantee, Zeus, you have that Common Thread CD, don't you? I've, I've worn that thing out. I've had two copies of it. Is that the BMG version or the Columbia House version? I got them both. <laughs> Is that Pablo Estes got that one? No, I think that was under Cho de Pandas. Or, or Mr. Hunt, first name Michael. Yeah, something like that. Ziggy Marley. Uh, <laughs> hey, he came to me. He got there. Yeah, as long as he got there. Yeah, I would All show right. these guys. Look what I got away with. Look what they came in, you know? So, All right. Um, Joe Decker, what you got? What are we at? Number seven? Number seven. Number seven. Off the Desperado album. Oh. Outlaw Man. That song. D-Track, D-Track. Wow. I, the note, my notes on that song is this song is just dirty. It's a dirty song. The guitar in that song is just as nasty as it gets. And I love it. And there's a really cool on YouTube live video of that that's just as raw as it gets the band they look like babies they're probably in their early 20s at this point in time i mean it's it's just it's just insane um love that song love that whole album i i agonized over over songs off that album in particular so that's my number seven love it i know you're a big eagles guy picking that song that song oh. fucking is such a deep cut when oh. they get into the 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 chorus of that Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that's so awesome! And, and, and like, like I said, and, and Bernie, like we were t- saying earlier, that guy is like the unknown. No one talks about him, and he was unbelievable. What he, that guy could play—they minimize yeah. him a lot. They yeah. do. They do. They do. They do. But the song wasn't written by the band; it was written by some guy named David Blue. David Blue. I wrote that down. I have no idea who that is. Um, and that's they're still a four-piece back then too. And, and it's it's evident in that live clip they don't sound as full as they did in their later years. Oh God! But it's just it's just you know Glenn playing acoustic guitar, Randy, Bernie, and and, oh, and that's it. That's the band. It's 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 slower too, but it's really really good. I just I just I just pulled up David Blue. Yeah, he looks like Jeff Goldblum. He <laughs> he was he does. He was born Stuart David Cohen. He Stuart. died in nineteen eighty two. He's another Stuart, but he died in nineteen eighty two while jogging in Washington Square Park, in New York City. Jeez. Heart is he attack. like is he like uh fly era Jeff Goldblum or like Jurassic Park era Goldblum? Fly era. He's definitely fly era. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at this picture. I he's thought he looked era. like freaking a the love trial of Juan Epstein and, and Horshack. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. You see that photo? Mr. Cartier. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah. Robert Heggies and Ron Palillo? <laughs> All right, we gotta tell this quick story. For some reason, remember freshman year. Somebody put up as a gag that he was coming to our school to speak. Do you remember that? Dave Kaplan? The Robert Hagees was coming. Like People were like, who the fuck is that? Isn't that like Ron <laughs> Epstein? Do you remember that? It was in Pitt South. They had these signs all over that he was coming Gosh. to speak. It like, sounds vaguely familiar, but man, that's going back 30 years. Tommy, he'll remember it. All right. And, and it was just so surreal. Like, why the fuck is Horshack or what's the name coming to our school to speak? He's a motivational speaker. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a gag. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you say All Epstein's right. coming to your school these days. That might be a different story. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, Zeus, number seven. Oh, man. So, we were just singing the praises of um, a one Bernie Ledin, right? Mm-hmm. So we're going to continue doing that. This is the first song that I ever was a deep cut that wasn't on one of their greatest hits album that I found that when I put it on the five disc player and I put all the Eagle songs on, that I'm like, what is this song? It's so catchy. I, I, I love it. It's off the debut album. And it's Train Leaves Here This Morning. And it's sung by Bernie Ledden. And uh, it's written by him and Gene Clark, the, the folk singer, the guy that's in The Birds. Right. They wrote the song. If you, if you hear it, um, you'll definitely be like, oh, my, this is definitely like a country version song, like country rock, if rock at all. 
I effing love it. The lyrics on it are incredible. Um, the uh, arrangement, the and you know what's great about it? When he came back, you remember before um, what's the name died? They did the History of the Eagles tour. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would bring him out, Bernie Letting, for I like sure an encore. Would. I forgot about that. Yeah, and he came that. in. And he s- would sing this specific song. And again, it, the goosebumps I get are from the original, the lyrics. You know, the begin. it starts off with, I lost 10 points just for being in the right place at exactly the wrong time. I mean, come on. That shit is awesome. Yeah. And then I, I always remember 1326 North Columbus was the address that I wrote down on my sleeve. And, and then when the chorus hits... And the harmonies are going off in the background. Oh, it, it's it's my favorite song and favorite contribution of his. I effing love it. Train leaves here this morning. Awesome. Okay. All right. So, Warden. And just curious, got? though. Do any of you guys know it? <laughs> no, I, don't, I honestly say I don't know it. I, I, think, know it. I, I think I've I heard it. Check it out, it's, though. It's, I, I, it's not one of the ones I'm most familiar with. Joe, no, my rotation. I know, I know, it's not ringing a bell right now, but I know, I remember hearing you ah, say that. I, I definitely yeah. threw you that's guys def- on. That's yeah. probably the deepest cut we're gonna probably want to deep. Love it, love yeah, it. I'll check it out though. There might be one other one. I've it's pretty deep. That that's really deep. That one. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 like Atlantic Ocean deep. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Can you be more specific? Sorry. Um, <laughs> number seven for you, Ward. Okay, my number seven is not a deep cut. It's on Hotel California. It's a song that can be about love or life. Like when you move to a new town, you meet that first, that girl and they think you're the hot stud or you're that employee that's shining, but some other a-hole comes around and shows, <laughs> shows you up. And you'll what, how, what does it go? You will always be until someone new comes around. New kid in town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's definitely one of my, because we've all been that guy. It's like, well, what's so great about him? Where you, you know, been or, lately? Yeah. Yeah. And, and growing up an only child, I didn't really experience that too much with my parents until later in life. But it's like, yeah, it just it could be about love, could be about life. It's just who, know, uh, things are going are, great and piss off. I, I love that song. And there's <laughs> all, and I don't know how many of you uh, watch the show Friends, but love Friends, love yeah. Friends. There's an episode I think that's like based on this song that when Joey is like the. Uh, what's the name of the thing? He, the Colony Sprays, and then there's a cowboy that comes up there. He's like the new kid in town. Stetson. Yeah, no, it wasn't Stetson. Dijon, Dijon for men, Dijon for men, and the cowboy. Oh, for men, yeah. And he can He's got some big thing. Joe is not dressed like a cowboy, but this cowboy comes along, and he's like, he says something, and and the girl goes with him, and it's like, yeah, he's a new kid in town. So it's like meat. it's like it's it's kind of like anything. Speaking of like the guy from Friends, Joey. Kind of brings me, brings me back to he was talking about that first season that Friends like was there and it took off. Yeah. It's kind of like I guess when you get your first hit as a, a musician or it's that first it's that first like first year of a show. I mean a lot of shows barely have a second season or a third season. It's that sh- first year it's just the best, and they're gonna watch you until another one comes along. I mean it, it's just That's so many right. aspects of life. New kid in town. Yep. So unlike the new kids on the block that were in town, you went to go see back in the day, Stevie. I ne- hey, I I will tell you this. I didn't. I did. I you know. I guess I liked some of the ballads they did, but now they were okay. The girl, there was a girl that I was kind of talking to at the time. Her and her her uh, sister were going to see them in Chapel Hill, and I was like, oh gosh, I wish somebody would just you, you let me know when you guys get out of there so we can drop a bomb on that place. That, I mean. I was not the old hanging tough. I bet you look, I bet you sat in front of the mirror and practiced the hanging tough dance moves, Warden, didn't you? No, we had a thing hanging called tough. we had a we called it a different thing in when we were growing up. It's called banging muff, but that was another how did, story. How did okay, how did we get from new from the Eagles and new kids on the block? Hey, oh, they were the really? new kids in town, bro. Hey Terrible Stevie, thing. Stevie, you were the one earlier in the episode that already set the precedent that New edition, so yeah. we know there's going to be hey, the new, new edition, edition album kills, review and new a edition time. kills new new kids on the block. There's no comparison there. All right, well, and then you'll follow that up with the Bobby Brown album review. <laughs> now, see, now, now look, 
I, I was a new addition. He said today. Bobby Brown. I thought he was going to go somewhere else about, but that's another. Saint Cherry Pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was not a big Bobby Brown solo fan, but anyway. All right. So even my after the two. warrant video, Stevie. I'm just kidding. I had to do that. Sorry. There goes that Dallas crap again. Anyway. <laughs> Dallas crap. That's about Bobby Brown yeah. and the Cherry Pie video. I know what you're talking about. Okay. We're talking about another Bobby Brown. We're talking about. Uh, my prerogative. Mm -hmm. Anyway, number seven for me, we've already talked about this. Uh, who had it on their list? Decker. Joe Decker had it on the list. So it's, I think it's our first. Well, no, it's not our first repeat. But uh, I can't tell you why. Uh, off long run, Timothy Schmidt. And yeah, I see Zeus shaking his head up there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, see, I told you. I told you. It's yeah. not a bad song, but of it's all not. the songs to be the first duplicate. Yeah. No, it wasn't the first duke. Hotel California was the first duke. We'll get so. All right, right, good. I feel better. Yeah, but yeah, Timothy Schmidt. I, I mean, no matter. The guy's got some pipes. I mean, like we said, uh, we talked before we went on the air about the the song with the beat on the Beach Boys tribute album. The guy can flat out sing, and uh, when he did, I can't tell you why. I, I not to say I don't like Randy Miles. I do like Randy Miles, but you know. Timothy Smith held his own taking his place. I'll put it that way. And I I, I love this song. Vince Gill did a great job with it on uh, Common Thread. But uh, I can't tell you why. You know song I, didn't like? I did not like that song that he sang. Oh, love will keep us keep alive. alive. No, no, love will keep us alive. A little too. Did little not too. like that. So it was, it was, uh, I think a, kind of stabbing Zeus a little bit. They went straight from I can't tell you why to a level keep us alive. Back to the back to the back to the back to the songs? Wow. Oh, that's that's love the show. Keep us alive. And he's got a good voice. The songs aren't bad, but he was good in Poco. There's a there's a million great other songs. Come on. That's all ah, what did you tell me earlier now? What did you tell me earlier? Corny as hell. Yeah, uh, pretty bad. Guy, pretty somebody's bad. corny as hell. What did I miss? <laughs> corny as hell. Oh, corny. I, was, I thought you were corny. saying, I'm corny, corny as hell. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Thanks. I am now. I, I, am. Didn't say it. I don't know who Thanks, said Joe. that. <laughs> Joe, corny as hell. Okay. Anyway. All right. Let's move all that, to all that talk about the new kids on the. All that talk about Bobby Brown, the new kids on the block, I guess. I, I think it know, was man. when Stevie did the new kids on the block dance. I yeah. know that. That's yeah. exactly. You know, I well, they were on that. here. They were on here a few minutes before us, Zeus. So we don't know what they were yeah, doing. What, what no, we, were, we were actually talking. Uh, <laughs> what goes on before the podcast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. If we want to bring up stuff that was talked about before the podcast, you know, we might get a rated XXX. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So moving on before we get into that again. That's number six, <laughs> number six. What you got, Murph? All right. Well, so looking at this song, I kind of chuckled to myself when I realized that this is probably the heaviest, hardest rocking song. Like we're talking about the Eagles. Like nothing on this list is ever going to be confused with being played on Aussie's Boneyard on Sirius XM. <laughs> but but on my list, this is probably as as rocking as it gets, and I use that term loosely. One of these nights. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh oh, no, oh, sorry. You like that? You know what I like about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I didn't have the mute on. Sorry. That was, uh, and, and Miser was still in the group then when they do the, the chorus, and you can hear him on there so great. His, his vocals on that. Swear I'm going to find you one of these. And when he does that, oh. when he starts off with that, ooh, and you can hear him. Yeah, you know who that. that is, though, right? Yeah, and who is it? It's not Don Henley. No, I know. I just did. I just that's, say it right. It's Randy Meisner. Yeah, right? I said. Yeah. I just said oh, Randy the Meisner. outro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I thought you were saying it was Don doing no, that. No, no. I said it was Randy Meisner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Did so well on that. That was so great. All right. So where are we at now? Decker okay. number six. Kind of going along with what Merv said. This is one of their their heavier songs, as heavy as it probably gets, almost for the Eagles, but. Uh, Classic, classic intro riff, amazing slide guitar solo, Victim of Love. Great tune. 
That's that guitar yeah. talking to you thing that that guy's holding about. It makes the thing. The, the song, the song, Don Don Felder was promised a song. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, got the uh, uh, man, get sandwiches. Get yeah, yeah, go, go get some sandwiches. sandwiches. <laughs> go get some sandwiches. Oh, Have we Mr. Henley, record. yeah, uh, Mr. Henley, do it. And it, yeah. you can't argue with Don with Don Henley doing <laughs> that. I mean, do you so love that he, though? Because he's right. What are you gonna yeah. say? Yeah, we had Don Henley. Well, no, Don Felder should sing. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah, right. Well, if you go on, um, there's a lot of YouTube videos of Don Felder singing it, like fairly recently in concert. It, it's there's no comparison. I mean, it, it, this, 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 that was not as long. He's music. not that bad during singing live. No, but he does not. it. The last couple um, uh, concerts he's performed, I checked his set list. He doesn't even sing it, which annoys the shit out of me because you made it such a big issue no. and you don't sing yeah. it now. I, I've, I've, I've actually it. seen a clip of him pl singing it live. He does okay. What yeah. was just awesome and so petty of Don and Glenn. They found the worst sample and they stuck it in the documentary because yeah. he sounds like Peter Brady. You know, when it's time to change, like he can't hit any of the notes. All right. Well, we're going to Brady Bunch tangent again. All right. Number six for you, Zeus. All right. Uh, guitar. So the, that's the big thing. Everyone's like, oh, Joe Walsh, Joe Walsh. Mm -hmm. Of all the people in there, I don't know. Walsh may be the third or fourth best, in my opinion. Yeah. Number one is Felder. Yes. Yeah. Number two, critically, is probably Vince Gill, who country music and uh, know how great of a legendary guitar player he is. Yes. And then Bernie Ledding can do multiple instruments. And I'm not saying Joe Walsh isn't as good as them, but he could be. To some people, um, this is another guitar, and it's because the Eagles and their fucking slide guitar just oh. the long run. Long the, run. the slide makes that work. And right. what's even better and made me fall in love with the song even more is that video they have of it, of them playing it in the studio. Have you oh, guys ever yeah. seen that? Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen that. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Awesome. It's them playing like performing the song in the recording studio and then you got joe walsh and don felder <laughs> laughing with each other especially when they, when they like uh, don's doing his finger wag at him don felder to joe walsh they laughing probably all coked up um, no. and just doing their own thing and the back and forth between the two of them and the slide guitar i, I the, that slide makes the long run work so so well what i don't like now is the Eagles, when they tour, I mean, mind you, they have everything covered. And that's why they sound pitch perfect. They have a fucking yeah. band. They have an orchestra behind them. They have everything. They have a choir at some point. They fucking play brass instruments instead of the slide guitar on the song. Mm. What? So when you hear it live, it's horns. Uh. It's the horns doing... Dun, 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 dun. It's not the slide. No and royalties I, for Mr. Felder, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why they did it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, it's a fucking kick-ass song. The lyrics are off the charts. And this, along with Victim of Love, there's a little stop. And the way Don Henley uh, delivers the vocals on this, it's not. he's not just singing straight. It's almost like he's like methodically singing each verse and going after each line and stopping but not really that much. And he's, and it just works. I don't know. It's almost like a, like a hiccup or something in between every one of those lyrics on the long run and victim of love. Very similar, very similar slide on it too. Awesome yep. songs. Yeah. Why would you do that to Felder? And I can hear Glenn Fry right now. You know why? Cause fuck him. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> It wouldn't say it's Mr. Felder. Mr. Felder, excuse Mr. me. Felder felt that uh, he yeah, was what? contributed to the band, and uh, we found that two other people uh, contributed to the band more, so uh, <laughs> he was left out of the band. And it's so it. That's right. Me and Don wrote all the songs. We're the only ones that were big in the 80s. Fuck them. You're not as big as us. Like, Jesus, what an asshole. Dude, he's yes. unbelievable in that video. He that is. fucking documentary, guys. Go watch it. It's and good. what's funny about the uh, it's funny about the Eagles is they they made him a partner and he wasn't even he wasn't on the first couple of albums right and and they were 
against him when he tried to ca- like claim his right to that, that they wanted him in there. So that shows the hypocrisy of the two. Well, what he know. was saying, they, they were letting him, they were letting him have his pick and he get splits. But Henley and them was doing the tours. Henley and them were picking everything and they were giving him a split. And as soon as he's like, well, hold on a second. Let me see these numbers. And they're like, what? Fuck <laughs> you, you're fired. <laughs> like just shut. And in some sense, it's a philosophy thing. Do you just play along and be like, this is the best gig I've ever gotten. They never should have made me a partner. They did. Maybe I should just shut my mouth like the other guys do in the band. Even Joe Walsh is like, fuck it. I'm getting paid big money. And the gig of a lifetime. Or do you sit there and say, no fucking assholes. You made me an equal partner. I want my fucking cut. And I want to see where the revenue and everything else is going. Did they ever settle that? Oh, he got sad. He made a fortune off. I bet it. he a did. Fortune. But he's an original. He's an original guy, according to them. So it's I mean, always I fascinating. I, yeah. This is the one thing I'd love to be able to get somebody in a band to break down the analysis of who's an original band. How much do they get? Like Bon Jovi. I know he hired his band. How much was Richie Sambora making? Does Richie Sambora make as much as the keyboard player? Yeah. Does John share it? No, that John doesn't. No. What do they get paid? How do you keep him satisfied? No, you're a hired gun. What does Tommy Thayer make? Like all that shit. Who's a member? Who's not? Who gets it? Like Peter, Chris yeah. wasn't in Kiss, but he was still an equal member. So how do you get paid if you're not touring and you're putting out a shitty album like Out of Control, but you're still getting a, a fourth of the albums you're selling on Unmasked? And everything else, even though you're out of the band, how the fuck does that work? And we all know that he got less than Ace on the reunion tour, so there you go. It's just, it's just, I'm curious. Do you go, okay, we're paying Kiss as performers, and you don't get any share of that because you're not touring with us. And then we release this album, but you can make money off the album even though you didn't perform on it? And you're still an equal member of the band? How the fuck does that work? Because they're not original, they're paid members, but they make good money, I'm oh, sure. Oh, but Peter was still until he like bought his share out. So he was making money off lick it up and everything else until they kicked his ass out yeah. or whatever. He settled remember, or whatever. I remember, I remember them like when Eric Carr did death and I remember him saying that, you know, Gene called him about taking a cut in his royalty. That's when I kind of first, wait a minute. I mean, I know it's a song, but that's a kiss song. Does he still get royalties? I mean, I, that was a good kind of the question you're talking about. Like I didn't know he still got paid. I assumed he left the band. He wasn't part of the band, so he didn't get anything from him. That's that's the way I would think of it. Well, it's the same thing, thing. Yeah. with um with what's his name Felder. He got kicked out of the band, right? Yeah, but they fired him, but he's still an equal member. Yeah, so he's still you can fire me all you want. You, know. you it doesn't mean I don't get my share. That's right. So how does that work? <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, interesting shit. And speaking of Peter. He just like he's having a blast lately. He went to hang out with Joe Perry, who's like you guys said. You know, we won't Looks like death. That. Yeah, and then he went to Monday Night Raw at the Garden. Yep. Then he was surprised. That. He surprised John Five, who they're good, good friends, I guess, on his birthday with Rob Zombie. Yeah. Peter looks like he's happy. He looks like he's looks enjoying good. himself. He just looks happy. He looks and, we all know it, and we all know his history. He's not exactly the most positive guy. Yeah. But he looks like he's enjoying life. Good for Pete. He looks great. I'm glad I'm glad he's getting out again because, you know, one time he was really, really worried about the whole COVID deal. You know, he, he was canceled a couple of things. But now it seems to be like he's he's fine with it. And he's, you know, if he was at Monday Night Raw, he's fine with it because there was a ton of people. There. He looked like a kid in a candy store. Hanging yeah, he out did. He looked like he was a happy guy. And, and you know, see why, Stevie? Because after Creatures Fest and he saw the love he was getting, he hadn't been out in three years. Yeah. And he started seeing people being nice to him. He got and his it, and Wendy. He let his hair go out differently. Yeah. He looks a thousand right. times better now. And all of a sudden now he's making public appearances. Him it's and his great. wife like, shit, people like us. We can make some yeah. money here. It's great to see it. And I, I can love, think he I could do it. a song or two on the end of the road, which I don't think will happen. Yeah. I mean, they say he can't play or what. I mean, that's bullshit. And I'm like I said, I'm. He can't play a whole concert. No way. Oh, I know that. Play, but he, he could play a couple of songs. Half, oh, yeah. Two hours. yeah. But we all know Gene and Paul didn't want those guys on more than a couple of songs. That's all they want. The History of the Eagles tour. That's what they could do. Yep. yep, exactly. They still need to have Bruce open up, but he would probably blow him off stage. So that's yeah, that's story. what they're scared of. Yeah, that's no doubt about that. Number six for you, Ward Murph. I like the way you think, brother. One of these nights, they give 
Joe Walsh the credit for making the Eagles kind of more rock. But I think it started with this, and and I think Don said that that they were trying to get kind of away from all the country rock and kind of in more of a more of a rock edge. And I think with this they pulled it off with Felder. I think Felder deserves a lot more credit than he gets, but of course, you know, they like I said, Walsh gets all the symbolic credit with Hotel California, which was great. But this preceded Hotel California, and it's still one of my favorite songs. I mean, I just I, I have I, it's it's another song that's been played a lot, but I haven't got tired of. And just the intro with the bass. I mean, I was just, just gonna say underrated intro. I mean, yeah, it's it's right there up there with Tapito Girl, man. So I mean, it, it's just it's just a good <laughs> feeling song. Man, I'm talking music wise. No. Man, battle station for Peter. Zeus, or Zeus, Zeus, what I have to put up with? Stevie's not listening to what the words that are coming out of my mouth. The bass That's all right, man. That's all right. The bass line, yeah, I can manage, yeah, I'm I just, can do the bass line. I mean, the songs, of course, not anywhere close. But, yeah. I'm aware of the but it's bass got that. It's got that feel, though, that it's just like, mm, that's cool. That's kind of rocking. That's different than, you know, 045. I mean, they, they have definitely progressed, you know. Yep. Okay. All right. So my number six. And me and Murph for seeing eye to eye on this one was he had it a little bit earlier. Uh, Lion Eyes, uh, you know, you hear this song, and, and one thing you love about the Eagles, you, we talked about the lyrics, but when you sit here and listen to Lion Eyes, you can picture this in your head. And I mean, I remember the story behind this was I think Henley and Fry were in a bar, and they were talking about all the people cheating and all this stuff. And there, there was there was this gorgeous woman, and she was with this older fat man. And the first thing they said was, yeah, she's got lying eyes right there. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, she didn't say Robert Kraft and she can't even, that. you know, that was, that was yeah, dirty Fry. old, dirty old man. <laughs> Glenn Fry he doesn't get, he doesn't get punished for uh, happy endings evidently though. Yeah. She no. can't even hide those lying eyes of what Fry said. So that's where that come from. And, you know, you can, you know, you, they start talking about she's going to the cheating side of town. Yeah, uh, you can you can totally, and that's one thing I love about the Eagles. When I really got into it, a lot of these songs you listen to, you can see the story behind it. They tell a story, and that's what I, I look that. for in a lot of the lyrics. I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Lion Eyes is my number six, so that's another repeat. And there's so many songs about men cheating. This is a woman, and it's the yeah. you know, it's it's like I said. A, a woman's perspective written by me. I mean, it's, you know, however I want to say it, but yeah. To tell of a woman who stays in a loveless relationship with a rich old man. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that fat guy was rich evidently that they saw. So number five for you, Murph, we're in the top right. five now. All right. Number five. Um, so I know this one, Joe, you, you riled this off right off the bat. Um, for me, this is just, uh, you know, got a long personal love with it. Take it to the limit. Nice. Yeah. Love Randy on this one here. It's too bad though that it like a, a great song like that that he had so much dis anxiety like, about anxiety it. about. And you think, oh, it's a great song, but when you see those behind, and I'm not a musician, and when you see that them going on stage, the you know, drilling can like make you like a Jericho or a Gene, but it can also quite scare the living shit out of you. I mean, it mm -hmm. like George Strait, he did cocaine for so many years before going on stage just to kind of come down and it, it, the anxiety and I've had it before and we've all been there, but can you imagine, you know, thousands of people and he was not in, a, he wasn't a newcomer. He'd been in the band a while and a lot of people overcome that. I think Gene did, but I, I, I mean, it's just, he just never, and they made him do it. They just, they weren't there supportive. Like, Oh, we can back you up. No, you need to yeah, F and do this. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was the, it was pre backing tro uh, vocals, you know, it was, yeah. that wasn't available back then. But I mean, I, I think one of the things that the documentary really did a good job of was just the opening scene where they show Randy. And I mean, they talked about it. It was part of the encore. They knew that, the female portion of the audience was like hanging on for that song. Yeah. It's got to get in your head. And then once again, Henley's got to throw the little line in there about, he's like, Oh, he's been doing a lot of, you know, he drank a bottle of vodka the night before. And even though yeah, he's, he's married nervous. with a couple of chicks, like, you know, you know, it was just, you guys are rock stars. That's how they dealt with it. It doesn't make any excuse, but you know, knowing that you have to hit that note night after night back in that time, yeah, I'm sure it ground him down at some point, but thankfully we've got the album version and 
That's all I care about. Can you imagine him watching that with his grandkids and they're like, oh yeah, you're banging a couple of chicks or I mean, and it's like, oh, I cheated on your grandma back in the seventies. I mean, that's, that's a bullshit. Is that the thing. grandma that he fucking took the shotgun and blew her head off? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, when she blew her own head off, what? whatever he did there, that whole fucking oh, mess. No. He's all crazed out now. Plausible yeah. deniability. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what's up with Randy. Oh, I forgot Randy. about that. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. I shouldn't have brought up the grandkids. Sorry, my uh, bad. Yes. I don't know what I happened with Randy. Mm -hmm. But I like when Joe's talking about <laughs> him and 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 Don Felder. They're like, he's just a, such a nice, gentle soul. And he was caught in between those two alpha males yep. who just fucking ate him alive. Yeah, that's, that's what Walsh said. He goes, he was an alpha. Uh, mm. <laughs> he wasn't yeah. that type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's all fucked up, and he, you know the pressure got to him. Yep. Whatever. Some some great lyrics in that song. One of the one of my favorites. You can spend all your time making money. You can spend all your love making time. If it all fell to pieces tomorrow, would you still be mine? But yeah, it, it's great lyrics in that song. That it didn't make my list though. I'm sorry. Sounds, sounds like a sequel to that. Hot chick and the fat old man, you know. If it's all gone, like yeah, that was on. Zeus a, turned me. Zeus turned me on to Boardwalk Empire because we we're talking about the. Oh mom. my god, I love that series. And Don't I was watching, and I and I was watching it the other day, and this this like guy lost all his money, I guess that in a thing that blew up, and the chicks were like, "What? You don't have any money?" And just like she goes on to the next dude, yeah. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> great, great, great. Series. I'm loving it. I'm gonna see about season three. I love it. It's great. Uh, if you love the mob mafia stories in history, the combination of this uh, this uh, for me, I like it better than the Sopranos because oh, wow. there's histor there's a oh, historic wow. aspect of it, and I love love the origin stories of the mob, and it's all right there. Oh, and I I, mean, I got a little excited the other day when I heard about the Godfather tease. So I'm just looking. Oh, you'll see, you'll see. Um, so the other thing I want to just add about "Take It to the Limit" um, is just how simple that chorus is, but why is it so fucking catchy the way they do it? Right, mm -hmm. that Paul Stanley fucking hook chorus. He yeah. just repeats it. Take One it more time to the limit. It's <laughs> take it right. It's just. You can sing that a million different ways. It won't be as good, but the way they phrased it and all, everything down, genius. Genius. Those harmonies. You know, yes. Unbelievable. unbelievable. It didn't make my list, and I think just because I probably played the hell out of it, I mean, just over the years, but yeah. that would definitely be on my honorable yeah. mentions because it's a great song. How many people, and we're not there yet, but how many people, like fans, are saying, like women would say, mm -hmm. Oh, take it a limit is my favorite song of all time. And then the next person would say, Oh, I can't tell you why is my favorite song. Yeah. And then yeah. somebody would say, Well, oh, how do you go wrong with Hotel California? It's the greatest. There's so movie. many of them. That's and then somebody would sit there and say, What yeah. are you talking about? Take it easy is the best song. Like, right. and everyone is from a different member. Right. Yeah. How many bands can do that? Not many. None. Yeah. None. One of them is one of our favorite bands, and that's Kiss. Yeah. Where someone can say, That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking. I'm sorry. He Who's thinking, fucking saying the Beatles "Yellow Submarine" is my favorite fucking song? I like the one about the walrus myself. So. Cuckoo Choo. I'm a big Beatles fan, so I. You know, uh, I'm just saying, like, there's not many people saying the Ringo songs are their favorite. Yeah, no. I right? love Ringo. Ringo was better solo than he was with the Beatles because he actually got to do something. You talk about another two alpha males. I mean, they totally. Oh, screwed. Harrison is my favorite because oh, they totally they because totally screwed George Harrison totally. And he showed it too. I know yeah. we're off on a tangent. That whole video of him saying to Paul McCartney, "I'll play it any way you want. I won't play at all if with that is what you need to make." Like basically, so passive aggressive. If you just don't want me to, I just won't play at all. To that documentary, you. Get oh Back, my was God. awesome. That is just. Is awesome. that the one that was on Disney? The one that came yeah. out last year? Yeah. 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 My wife, my daughter, and I we watched it. They're just let sitting it, there, and all of a sudden, he's just creating "Let It Be" on the fly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like how Gene came up with murder and high heels. Exactly. Murder. Yeah. High heels. Paul came up with let it be. I came up with murder and high heels. Nothing is worse than Boomerang. That is the worst kiss song of all time. And Ooh. I came up with that gem too. <laughs> yep. You're oh. welcome. <laughs> Joe Decker, number five for you. Number five. Uh, it's going to be a repeat, but I'll just Hotel California. Um. Wow. What can you say about it? Um, I just in my notes I had you know legendary lyrics that as a eight year old little kid really scared the hell out of me. The lyrics were terrifying, 
Um, but the but the thing about that song that to me is just so incredible. Um, the harmony guitar solos at, at the end. Oh, I mean, before there was D Martini and 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 Crosby, Crosby and and you know Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, KK Downing, Clifton. I, I would put I would put Joe Walsh and Don Felder in that category any day of the week. I mean, their styles were so uniquely different, you know, with Felder being more technical and, and Joe Walsh being kind of sloppy, but they could play together and, and play off of each other as good as anybody I've ever seen, you know, if not better than the yep. guy. And, and only so, two albums. It, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No telling what you could have done if they'd had more. Exactly. So that, that, that song, I mean, what, what more do you say about that song? It, it's yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can say a little bit more about it later on, but we'll get to that. Uh, Number five for Zeus. All right. So uh, as you can tell, I'm coming up with deep cuts and I'm not coming up with them because I'm doing it just to be different. Yeah. I'm coming up with them because you I've listened them. to every song by the Eagles a million times. And it's always the one that you're like, oh my God, I have, this doesn't come up on compilation. It doesn't come up on shuffle as much, but I want to go to this. And this song is off of, <laughs> the much maligned newer album, right? Long Road Out of Eden. Yeah. It's their first single. How long? Now, this song's guitar is so fucking awesome. It's got one of the guitar on it. It's incredible. It's got the dual vocals, which any yep. dual vocals between Fry and Henley going back and forth is always going to be a plus for me. And it's I got a JD Souther like component to it. So this was a song that is on John David Souther's uh, debut album came out in 71, 72. And he wrote it back then. And you know, everyone knows now, if you know the Eagles that JD Souther is like the their contributor, <laughs> major, yeah. Major contributors on the no. back of the Desperado album is one of the killed uh, musicians in the back. Um, he wrote this song. If you go on YouTube, you will find the early 70s versions of the Eagles playing this song. So this is an old song they played. And so when they decided to do Long Road Out of Eden, they're like, why don't we dig up that song? And it's got that fucking rocking guitar that I can, um, I can only compare it to Chip Away at the Stone and... Uh, I know it's only rock and roll. Go that type, and and like and stay with me. That type of oh, like wow. sleazy kind of pick me up guitar. I I can't explain it. It's fucking great. And unfortunately, there's no Felder in this. But Joe Walsh does a great pick. Uh, Henley sings the hell out of this song. And this is the 2007 version, which is on uh, the Long Road of Eden album. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can find the old versions where they used to sing this in concert in the early 70s and perform this song. It's a fucking great tune. And I love it. I go to it all the time. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that one out. I'm not question. With it. Quick question. Oh, they did a video for it too, by the way. So there is yeah. a new video for it. Yeah. And you can see, and it's actually not bad. Joe, are you familiar with the song? You're you muted, Joe. You're muted. I'm mute you, yeah, you guys. Yeah, I am. The thing from the from the uh, the newer. How, long, yeah. how did how did JD Southern not ever become a member of the Eagles? Oh gosh, he had his own solo career before they yeah, kind of really I mean, started. So he had his. But own yeah, with all these replacements that come along at different times, I mean, I wonder if they'd ever. I mean, this is just hypothetical. I wonder if it ever entered their minds. Well, why don't we ask JD to, to take his place? I think there's something out there where. His sound, he sounded too much like them, and he just wasn't enough of a musician from an instrument standpoint that he could bring anything in. Okay. But th they did talk about it, and they do consider him like, you know, hey, he was part of the group. He, you know, he helped us. But yeah, you know, just like when they were swapping out players, he just couldn't bring in anything from a, you know, a, a technical standpoint on the guitar or bass. Gotcha. Like that. Gotcha. Awesome. Gotcha. Awesome songwriter, though. Yes, very. Yeah, he's got a ton of hits and great voice. So, Warden, you're all right. Oh, he's uh, he's actually Murph. When is he coming? 
He came last week, man. Ah, we missed it. We ah, did. We oh, did. Oh, he was playing. I know. I know. I was hoping you were going to bring. Oh. He was playing at some like two hundred seat theater. Yeah, the next and- town over in Natick. Wow. Yep. yep. I know. I know. Sorry, Zeus. <laughs> All right, Warden. Number five for you. All right, mine's a repeat. And you know, it's funny with this one in uh, 055, I thought I had deep tracks, but Zeus has definitely got me beat. And usually when we do these podcasts, I'm the one that has the deep tracks and get a lot of criticism for it, non-Torpedo Girl songs, because my partner in crime over there likes the hits that I'm very burned out uh, on. Da, 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 don't yeah. do that. Man. I fight for my rights, dude. So oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this song... I'm, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing. You're I'm gonna, gonna sing. Say the, I'm gonna God, sing hold on. Let me mute this right. Hey, you ready for ratings to go up, boy? <laughs> Let me start singing. Oh my God. Um, when the towns lay out across the dusty plain, like graveyards filled with tombstones waiting for the names. How badass is that lyric? And uh, Murph had it earlier. It's a song about the Dalton brothers, who evidently it's a factual story that they evidently got a few of their guys got killed and they went after them and then they got killed. But, you know, talking about lying like graveyards with filled with tombstones waiting on the name for the names. I mean, that's as, that's about as country as you freaking get, dude. I mean, <laughs> I've been to tombstone and I mean, if you know, back then they would just carve it into the, you know, tombs back then tombstone back then, but just one of my favorite songs, revenge and, this could have been a Western, you know, it's just, yeah, you know. it could have been good. Good job, Warden. I'm proud of you. That's Thanks cool. brother. You've actually heard this song. So I'm proud of you too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number five, keeping with the Western theme. And this has been a song that's been played, probably been played to death, but I, I love it. I could list. I'd never turn away from it. Don Henley, one of Don Henley's iconic songs. And like I said, I'm a sucker for a ballad. And you'll see that. You'll probably see that in the next, well, a lot of my top five. But Desperado, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, what, you can't go wrong with Desperado. Uh, don't Same you album. get cold in the wintertime? Uh, I mean, it's just a great, great song. And a lot of these songs that I pick on my list, you'll notice, are from Hell Freezes Over. And a lot of these songs, Hell Freezes Over version, to me, is better than the the actual original version, but oh come on Zeus, come on Zeus. When we get to one, there's one up here. Hey, there's one up here. I've already talked about, and I haven't talked about, but I in my head, I know you're gonna kill me over this. And and you when you hear it, I got. I, w- I wish I could screenshot your face. You gotta look up when oh, I do. I do this. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Zeus, you have your first stalker. <laughs> Desperado. Desperado is my number five. Don Henley does a great job of that. And you're, and you're, you know, you're talking you know, about the original one? Yeah. The I'm one, the one, one, there's a one country guy that I liked in the 80s who does a cover version of this. Uh, Clint and Black. it is bad freaking ass. And that's Clint uh, Clint Black. Yeah. He did yeah. a version here that they, I don't know if it was on Common Threads. I'm not it really is. sure. It was. Yeah, it okay. is. But he did it live in a studio version here in a local station. And I heard that, and I went back and listened to it, and I like that version, too. I, I like his version. I mean, I don't like it more than the original, but it's a great version. Yeah, Another great, great version is by uh, Linda Ronstadt. Yes. Well, yeah. that that version wow. got big, was bigger hit than the Eagles version. That was yeah. the original version, right? Because weren't they the backing band on that song? Well, it's their song. They did it, and then she made it a more of a hit with her performing it. But it's, you know, they played for her and then they, she took their song and made a hit out of it. But there's always this rumor that they were her backing band. That's not true. Before no, they, is, before they, they formed. No, they perf- yeah, they performed for her. They were her Yeah, band. yeah. so they, really? they traveled with okay. her and then Glenn and... I heard that was a Dawn. myth. Sorry, my bad. No, yeah, it's not yeah. a myth. They played for her. Yeah. Isn't this a song from Seinfeld with that that one uh, Elaine had a boyfriend and this was like his his song and they, she wanted to have a song and, Jer- and, and they picked like Witchy woman, like, oh, witchy woman. Yeah. <laughs> witchy woman. Witchy. Yeah. yeah, like he uh, would like shush her when a song her. came up. Yeah. And she'd be like, uh, can't we get our own song? No. Witchy woman? Witchy woman. 
Okay, woman. That's funny. That tells you how big the Eagles were, like, you know, 20 years after that song came out in the 90s. Like the 90s yeah. The Eagles, the Eagles still being talked down. about. I, I, tell me this. Maybe I'm wrong. Have the Eagles ever really had a, a down period? I, I don't recall. I don't think so. I mean, because, you know, every every band – I mean, Kiss had their down period. The Eagles, I've never seen them had that down period. Yeah, but they took a 10-year – like they took a break. break. I mean, that's classic. That rotation. helped. That helped. Yeah. That helped. Kept them alive. Yeah. Just like, just like what Zeus said. How can we miss you when you don't go away? We never yeah. go away. So, Zeus always says that. I do so remember. Give I do you, to you, Zeus. So yeah, we give you the brother. elder. Yeah. Thank the the, you, the, the down period is uh, <laughs> Glenn Fry's "Smuggler's Blues" from Miami Vice. It's a, nature yeah, that's a great thing. song. I love that. Oh, song. that song kicks ass. No, yeah. Yeah. In the video with Dwight Evans comes out and kills him in the end. Dwight yeah. Evans, that the Boston like, Red Sox guy. That, that looks like Dwight Evans. I used to see that video. I'm like, why is Dwight I've Evans got to a drug it. dealer? I've got to watch it. At the Dwight end, he's like Evans. smiling at him. <laughs> a little Dwight Evans, Davy Lopes look. Davy Lopes. Oh my gosh. All right, let's move on. Murph, we're up to you, number four. All right. I actually Dwight thought Evans. I was going to. Um, be the only one to bring this up and i uh, was surprised to see joe bring it right out of the gate uh number four for me is a repeat it is try and love again um uh, maybe my favorite uh oh yeah that, Randy was, that was me oh, i was stevie yeah yeah oh that was sorry me. okay great song i love it great song great song and like i said you can you can tell that hits close to home the way he's the way he's singing it too the emotions there and that, that's what you look for in a song, too. When that emotion's there, you can tell when somebody's like, he feels it, and, and he felt it in that song. He he did an awesome job on that. Number four for Decker. I think this is yeah, going to be controversial based on a, a other podcast I listened to that rated a certain album called Hotel California. But um, no. live version, live version. Oh, gosh. Pretty Mates. I freaking love that song so much. Um, let's okay, face it. Joe Walsh vocals leave a lot to be desired, but but they picked the right <laughs> songs for him to sing. But they're they really unique. Like, it's it's it is like in the city. They, this song, you know, they picked the right songs for him, and you know he'll never go down as probably one of the best guitar players that there ever were, things like that. But this guy knows the notes to play. He just <laughs> knows which notes to play. And that's the slide. Um, and that live version on Hell Freezes Over, I, I just, oh. I love that. I love it. I, I yeah. play it over and over and over again. And um, that's my number four. Wish you were that's now, number can four. You, can you play all these songs on your guitar? <sighs> if I worked on them all, like I've known most of these songs uh, over the years, but the slide stuff, I'm just not that good at it. It's 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 a really unique thing to do. It's not easy at all to, to just be on that one string with that with that you know slide on your finger. It's it's takes some it takes some practice. I'm I'm not laughing at, at anything Joe said. I just come across Smuggler's Blues when did when Davy Lope Lope <laughs> comes out there. Dwight Evans comes out there and kills him. I'm sorry. Dwight Evans at the end he starts yeah, laughing. He's, he's got the hat on. At him. He's just <laughs> laughing at him. Yeah, oh it's Dwight Evans. Yep, we have pretty maids. No, we'll talk a little bit about that. I think Tommy later. loved that song, didn't he, Murph? He did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, out of nowhere. I, I, I think song. beautiful song. I just wish that, that someone else sang it. But you know, you know, wow. we you think about this. Joe Joe brought up a good point. Talking about you know the songs fit Walsh. Don't we talk about that with Ace? Ace is not the best singer in the world, but his a lot of his songs, except Torpedo Girl, fits, fits him. I mean, like, I mean, rip it out. Uh, what do you expect Scott, him to do? He's going to sing I Still Love You? <laughs> he's, I, writing that, these, he's right. No one writes songs for Ace. Ace writes no, songs Ace that writes he can sing. Yeah, exactly. He's not singing I mean, something that's... He's not trying to be Paul, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's not singing Bruce Dickinson type vocal performances. <laughs> what, he's not singing <laughs> Alexander the Great? No. Hey, look, this song yeah. called Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't singing shit. Yeah. So, who we got? We're up to Zeus. You're number yeah, four. four. 
Uh, my first duplicate. Uh -oh. Somebody, Somebody vacuum it. Vacuum it. <laughs> Not me. Not me. I don't Not hear me. it. Not right. me. Who was that? Who's head last? Not me last. That's it. <laughs> um, that's uh, Take It to the Limit. We've all talked Ooh. about it. It's an incredible song, incredible performance. Uh, and the, just the high notes and, and stuff. And I love that it's his signature song and they each have one. Right. So for me, I, I, I just, I love it. Cause I love Randy. I, and I think that he doesn't get the credit for being that like main harmonizing vo voice in the band and then having a couple great songs in there too. Was yeah. that their first number one? No, that's our uh, best of my love. Okay. Which is the worst number one song they've ever had. Oh, Great. Uh, sorry. Coming up next, Stevie, Best of My Love. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's great. That's great. First. Okay. I don't think anybody's had this on here, but along with Desperado, this is the first Cavalier. Think about this. That's a big word like gymnasium. Collaboration uh, with Fry and Henley writing a song. They didn't do it on the first album. And this song, speaking of Michelle Pfeiffer, this song reminds me of the beach for some reason. And it I don't think it talks about the beach in it. Oh, uh, I know what you But know. when I first started drinking Movie. at 21, you know, because I never had a sip of alcohol before that. Hell I, I had to try this drink. It's the tequila bad ah, tequila sunrise. Tequila. But like I said, they didn't, I read up, they didn't write any songs together on the first album, but along with, you know, Desperado, they wrote this. And you talk about two songs to start out with to begin like that collaboration. I mean, I mean, who knew they didn't write on the first album? I didn't even know that. I mean, if you're really a deep, I mean, I, you know, I know, I know you did, Zeus, but I didn't know that. <laughs> kind of like I thought it was a myth that they backed up Linda Ron said, even though I watched the documentary. That's so, I mean, it, it's just memory crap with me, but yeah, to keep the sunrise yeah. thoughts, anybody thoughts on yeah, it's good. No, I like the, I like the Michelle Pfeiffer reference. Uh, yeah. that, that, that was, uh, my horrible Harsley. movie, by the way, she didn't get oh, naked. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, yeah. that was the one that just missed the cut. It, it was either that or peaceful, easy feeling. That's, uh, yeah. That I think those are similar to uh, Very similar. Yeah. Te tequila sunrise is there too. And it's like, kind of like, I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. It's same. It's similar to new kid on uh, new kid in town. Those two songs just they're Glenn both Fry, on my list, by the way, soft, yeah, <laughs> just soft rock stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, it, it's, nah. it's, it's not actually, bad songs. No, but no. best of my love. Throw that in there. There's your trifecta. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, it's funny you say it because, Glenn and Don, you know, they were backing Linda up before the Eagles. In the documentary, they Don says that they liked playing and traveling with Linda because she could drink and she could drink tequila. So mm -hmm. maybe they had some tequila yeah. sunrises after, you know, closing out a show and closing down the bar. Didn't, so now wasn't that Don, wasn't she dating one of the guys, Don Henley, or who was she dating? Oh, I don't know about that, but uh, I thought she dated what's the name before he died. Uh, the guy that Bernie Ledin was with. Oh, oh, uh, Graham Parsons. I thought that's who she was dating. I don't know. I'll look. Oh, up. maybe you oh, talk about smoking. Burrito, you talk about smoking and back in the day, God, she was hot. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you, fast, didn't you fast forward to that song with American Tail? Don't know much. And, and then she became one. the Lisa Sparks instead of Linda Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next cameo for Stevie will be Linda Ronstadt. Oh, I don't even think she'll do that. Yeah, no, she has I mean, she has MS real bad. She's yeah, real, she's, she's real she's messed not up. Doing good. She was yeah. um dating uh Jerry Brown, I think, at the time. The oh, oh, that's right. The Isn't government. that where Gene met Cher when they were everything goes back to Kiss, where they a uh, Jerry Brown like can uh that's never mind. That's where he met Cher. That's you know. In case y'all didn't know that little bit of history. There you go. All right. So we go to my number four. And this is here we go. You don't you don't even know about this. Best of my love. It, no, it. no, no. Oh. This is gonna be a kind of a deep cut, I guess. Okay, what you would say a deep cut. And uh 
this is using a device. I mean, which starts off with the oh, talk yeah. box. The talk box. Great intro. Talking about those shoes. Oh, oh. I mean, the fact that they put that in the fucking set list now. Yes, great song, and uh, you know, you hear when you know you hear the talk box with with Bon Jovi with Peter Frampton, but a Joe double Perry. talk box, a double talk box on this one with Felder and Walsh. I mean, come on, these guys do a great job with it, and and the live version is awesome. I, I mean, somebody somebody turned me on to that today. I, I give credit where the credits do, but. Uh, yeah, it it's it's just a great song. I remember actually the first time this is gonna be Warden's gonna probably bash me for this. <laughs> the Steelers were getting ready to play. Oh, here we they were go. getting ready to play the Browns like in '94, and the intro was the intro to, to those shoes. I mean, it was like the bum, 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 and then it, I was like, "Holy crap! Who sings that song? I've got to hear that song." And I found out it's the Eagles. Later on, but yeah, uh, there yeah, that's my number four. Those shoes, one of my favorite Eagle songs. Nice. You sure it wasn't the Steelers coming out to new shoes, that real cheesy 80s song? I can see them coming out to that instead of the this great the song. Cowboys coming out to White Horse, yeah, want to ride, ride the pale horse. horse, the pale horse. Just remember, this is our year, yeah, right? Okay, <laughs> all right, no, when they're new, yeah, okay, I like that line. That we've all seen this guy, the jerk offs in the fancy cars. I love that freaking line. Yeah. I just, you know, and, and knowing Henley, he probably wrote that about a politician he didn't like. <laughs> probably so. Yeah. Didn't all make right. my list, but made my honorable mentions. A great, big, great pick, Stevie. Yeah. Number three for Murph. You're talking to yourself, Murph. You're Mur nope. you're, there, uh, you there you go. There you go. There I am. Uh, so getting into. The, the the ones that are kind of just the, the chill out, well, chill out, but overkill, these have an extremely strong personal co connection. They've never gone tired of it. Desperado is my number three. I remember that as when I started going into the bars in Boston, there was one place every Thursday night they would play it as one of their kind of winding down songs and then you know, in in college, it was always in the closing hour when Zeus was finally going to bed around four o'clock in the morning, and finally <laughs> some people go to sleep. That would always get the play, and you know what? It's one of those songs. No one's ever going to tell you to change it or turn it off either. That's no. number three. No. Where did you hear it? What bar on Thursdays? Purple Shamrock. Oh. That's not like the Blue Orchid, is it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but, but, oh, <laughs> Finn McCool's. Hey, well, you said Desperado, right? Desperado. Desperado. Okay. Yeah, Desperado. Okay. All right. Desperado almost made my list, but I think I went with um, 055 more because I'm listening more to that, and it's not as wear and tear on me as Desperado, but... I mean, it's, I mean, it's Desperado. I mean, it's not on my list, but God, what can you say bad about it? It's a great tune. Mm -hmm. If right. you don't like it by the Eagles, go listen to another artist. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Linda Runsetter, Clint Black, too, I like. So, Decker, number three for you, bud. Number three, I'm with you. I went with uh, those shoes, number three. Number mm, three. Nice. Wow. Um, and like we were talking earlier, Stevie, that that live version, I just found that live version within the last week as I was doing the research for this. Um, it's that from the forum, what was it, from 2020. Yeah. That is just as heavy and nasty as it gets. I mean, the way that that thing ends up, ba -da, ba -da, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a Metallica drum at the end. You know, it's amazing. Is and this on an official release? I got to check it out, yeah. this version. Yeah. The, the 2020 the at the forum. The forum. Okay. The forum. Um, it's just, it's just amazing. I, I love the studio version off a long run. And then I heard yeah. this and I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is so good. So Joe, good. Joe and I, Joe and I talked earlier today, talking about how the list would come along. Joe was telling me how either I got some, I said, well, I've got a, I've got a kind of deep cut and I don't know if anybody else would pick on there. And Joe said something about a talk box. I was like, oh God, I'm not saying the name of the song, but yeah, I th think I've got the same a talk box song on my list too. Oh, so, so but good. yeah, so 
But I, you talk about talk boxes, you talk about living on a prayer, obviously. But I think the oh, Joe man. Perry version of like Walk This Way and the Texas Jam, like in that video for it, I mean, that that's pretty badass, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, Zeus, are you thinking of Sweet Emotion? Yeah, no, sweet I think emotion. He, does, he does it with Walk This Way as well. Oh, does he? Does he? I, really? I think, I think it, no, he does it with Walk. I, I, I could have been. Could have been sweet emotion, but it's badass no matter what it is. I know sweet they do emotion it on sweet emotion. Right? Legendary opening. Yeah. yeah, but I thought I thought I saw it with uh, wow, I thought wow, I saw wow. him. I thought I saw him going with uh, walk this way. I could have okay. sworn I've seen walk this way. I could I be wrong. I'm trying to think. All good. Not that was many, that. and we've seen how many lives poor Joe has lived. <laughs> so yes. made that a long time ago. <laughs> Zeus number three. Um, another song not picked yet. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that it's not picked yet. Oh, God. Uh, I think it's a fucking kick-ass song. Uh, one of their popular songs. And I love the story behind it that they brought in from uh, the outside um, Mr. Mister Felder to <laughs> do the guitar solo on it. And if you see the early 70s live footages when he's playing it and how fucking loose he is just cranking it, and that's already gone. Oh, that great song. Yeah. Great call. is oh, really unbelievable. Again. Never mind the lyrics. You know, it just what I heard some people talking the other day. You're gonna put me on a shelf. I mean, come on, this shit is unbelievable. And the lyric that I love, and this would be like instead of Kiss lyrics, it'd be Eagles lyrics. Uh, remember this, my girl. When you look up in the sky, you can see the stars and still not see the light. I mean, come on. <laughs> Holy hey, shit. Who who did this on Common Thread, Zeus? Oh, absolutely. My favorite version on this album. And that is Tanya Tucker doing it. Yes. Holy shit, she kicks it. She yes, kicks she does. its ass out of the park. Her raspy delivery on this. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, Zeus, how great a job did Deacon Fry do it at the concert? Oh, absolutely. Killed Unbelievable. It. Like, I went going into it like, Glenn's kid, he, he was really, really talented. He did a great job on this version in the concert. Just a simple woohoo that he does <laughs> fucking kicks ass. Like, I'll tell you, if like you don't need to have Metallica to drive in a Corvette to be like fucking, like, you know, rocking out. Oh, you yeah. can blast this song, drive into the Cape like we would do. And I would do back in the golden days before my. Uh, married, subsequent divorce, and I had my little Mercedes convertible Murph. Remember that one? And I would fucking blast already gone driving to the Cape with this song blasting. Oh, I think I man. think this song really hits home, kind of like New Kid in Town. Is that we've all been through this shit? You know, it's like, okay, we'll see ya. I'm Fuck already off, gone. Man. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Fuck off, and you just been woo hoo hoo. <laughs> and, and a lot of and a lot of people and a lot of people say that lyrics don't matter. I mean, this is a perfect oh, example gosh, how yeah. they do it just i mean yeah. yeah f that bitch you know and it's, it, you know stuff like that yeah and i also oh, believe that paul thing the way f word the word that fits in the song and the way you sing it makes, yes like you can have a different word that would make more sense but if you add this word in it it sounds better when you sing it it just perfectly done and again I, and i we haven't even said this i haven't said this yet like Everybody sings praises about Randy Meisner's vocals, right? And then everybody says Don Henley, one of the best voices, recognize one of the best voices in rock of all time, right? Everyone knows that. Yeah. When you say Glenn Fry, to me, I'm always like, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. But then again, like I never notice how good he is. He's, he's solid, and it's not a voice that I can rec. To this day, I'm still like, 21. Is that? Bernie Leonard is that Glenn Fry? Hold on a second. Yeah. Is that Glenn Fry or Randy Miser on that part? Like there are songs that I still don't know that I can't figure out who if that's because his voice isn't distinctive. But god damn it, he sings great songs. Absolutely. He does a great job on his yeah, so underrated. Yep. So already gone. Yeah, I love the Tanya Tucker version on that too. Murph, you know what? The Tanya Tucker version? Yeah, I do. Okay, I was yeah. gonna say good, go. good version. Yep, you I haven't that. listened. I haven't listened to that album in years. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Be doing that. Yeah, it's great. So I'll be doing that. Great. Yep. Awesome. 
There was a uh, picture on my Facebook page, and I think you commented on Zeus about Rod Stewart playing in Nashville, and I guess he's mm. good friends with Tanya Tucker. It's like, why didn't oh. and you said it? Why didn't those two ever do anything? Oh. Like, a, you yeah, know, because yeah. he was probably banging time. her like fucking Glenn Campbell was when she was. Yeah, 14. I was gonna say she could take some time off from Glenn Campbell and go to Rod. Was like Stewart. fourteen at the time, right? I, I, I don't know, man. I think Rod probably had a little bit she was, better selection. They, I had I had a like a great aunt that uh, every time we take her to the grocery store to go grocery shopping, the first thing on her list that wasn't food every week. It was a National Enquirer. Oh, yeah. For a, for a oh, while yeah. there, for a while there, Glenn Campbell and Tanya Tucker were on a National Enquirer like <laughs> yeah, every right. week. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, Warden number three. Number three is a repeat. Uh, it's a song that, like I said earlier, has been very overplayed. But lying and cheating makes a hell of a song and a great country song. And like I said, it's more from a woman's view. But when he says um, there at the end, like, my, oh, my, you sure know how to arrange things. I mean, who hasn't been there as well? It's like, God dang, what did I do this shit again? You know, and it's just you're, you're doing stuff over and over again that you know that may kill you, whether it be drugs or relationship. And and you catch yourself as like, why am I still doing this? And I, you know, the. I don't know how it ends. I mean, there's not a sequel to this song, but does she leave the guy? seems like at the end, she kind of wises up. It's like, you know what? You need to get past this crap. You know, a typical country song, you know, like country, I guess, rock song that, <coughs> excuse me, that that just, you know, it comes on. I still jam it. I mean. Okay. Number three. Number three for you. Number three for me. We talked about a little earlier. I think Zeus had it. I don't think anybody else, but Zeus has had it. Wasted time. Mm. Love it. Ah, man. <laughs> Great call. Uh, you know, you go through the the whole gamut of of emotions with this one. You know, oh my God, you can't believe it's happening again. And then you don't care much for a stranger's touch, but you can't hold your man. Or then, the I think the the best line for me sometimes to keep it together, you got to leave it alone. Oh. And but. So, I mean, full of great lyrics. And when they go do that breakdown in the middle, and then Henley comes out and starts, he's in another key then. And, it, oh, man, he just, in the end, it, this is one of them that I like the Hell Freezes Over version better. I mean, it. I, I don't know what it is, but, yeah, wasted, wasted time is just freaking awesome. Like I said, I'm a sucker for a ballad. All your picks are off Hell Freezes Over. You know, and that's like your straight out of the box picks. Like I <laughs> about, you know, those three. shoes, those shoes are, is not on Hell Freezes uh, Over. You got, you got one there. You were probably being Jason. fabulous, Jason. Being Jason fabulous. Give me, give me a song, Jason. I got to put something else other than <laughs> being fabulous was not on there. See what I go through? It's all the big. I'm just kidding. I'm, just, I'm not going to go there. Oh, I, 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 next time, next time, I'll put freaking boomerang on there, so you'll be happy. I give, <laughs> I give. I give good as you know, I give, I give. Fight, fight, fight. I, he should know because I, I don't know if oh, Zeus right. heard heard our podcast or we were talking about that song. There's a lawyer. He's like a personal injury lawyer. And a local commercial, and he has that on the radio. And I heard that on the radio. I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember that song." Get over next it. time. No, next uh, time I put. Yeah, fight for your right by Motley Crue. Like five, next, five. But next time yeah, I'm, I'm, we do a Motley Crue list, I'll put Jailhouse Rock up there. How about oh, that? Oh, <laughs> oh God! But no, but I give Steve, I give Stevie a bunch. Right I, give, I give Stevie a bunch of crap about how he'll have his top ten, but he'll have about forty honorable mentions. To go I along with it, too. this was one list. That, this has been the hardest list I had to do, and I don't think I could ever do a kiss. And I don't think I could ever do a kiss one, and them being my favorite band. Is Lou Gehrig here? <laughs> There's some echo, echo, echo. Today, I didn't fur about it. What is that thing on the uh, airplane? I thought, I thought you said Lou Gehrig. You said I thought you meant that dude. I. Was made for dancing. Who who was Leaf Garrett? Leaf Garrett. That's what I thought you said. What the fuck is that? Leaf you Garrett? remember Leaf Garrett? <laughs> oh I, my god! I don't Leaf. remember his music. <laughs> I don't. I, I remember I, him from the from the Outsiders. The outsiders. Yeah, get stabbed. He, be, he yeah, banged uh, Nick Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, he got, I killed him. I killed that boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the karate kid would yeah. stab somebody. Put yeah, but bitching, he, would you? 
Only yeah, Bolton but, was a great movie, though. But he got Nicholas Sheridan before Michael Bolton ruined her. So, oh, she was so smoking that lady. She destroyed yes. him. She destroyed Leaf Gare. He, he never recovered from that. <laughs> He that, never said that. that woman well, is an yeah. animal. She probably ripped people to shreds. <laughs> well, did. some people would probably say the same about Bolton, man. Going from everybody's crazy to how I mean, I like Bolton, so I, that's a that's blackjack a, uh, with Bruce Kulick. <laughs> but I, I like some of Bol that's like one Give of our flapjack. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of his band, Flapjack. Oh, no. Everybody was like, everybody's crazy. Uh -oh. Everybody's crazy, yes. Oh. Well, you remember we would I, I think I said uh I said, Joe, somebody, I, I don't know if it was you or somebody on the Shadow Out Loud cast page put an old picture of Vinny up there. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that. I said, I said, Joe, I said, I said, Joe, a YouTube video. I said, see who you recognize in this video. Oh, and I it know was Dan, one. Dan Hartman, instant replay. Yeah. And, and G Smith background. from Saturday Night Live was up there. And then all of a sudden you see Vinny come out there. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, really, dude? Come on. That should be it. That should be a, Shout out Loudcast episode in its own. He looks right like Mr. C one of the Creepleys from the fucking <laughs> Saturday, from the Saturday cartoons. Yes. You know the Creepleys? Yes. That's what he looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Before we get on a Vinny tangent, uh, uh, number two, number Murph. Two. All right. So uh, it's been mentioned a couple times already. I'm going number two, take it easy. Um, and for me, you know, I know this is a song that probably a lot of people have just fatigue with, but the way I look at it is where you have a song like Hotel California that goes for seven minutes. This is three and a half minutes. Yeah. And it just, from the very beginning, I've always been pulled in over time when I heard the whole backstory that Jackson Brown couldn't finish it. He gave it to them, you know, just, uh, you know, there's a girl, oh, my Lord, you know, the flatbed Ford and, just how they filled in the rest of the second verse and then the harmonies. I mean, that's the, you know, if you're not familiar with them and you threw that on the first time and hearing those harmonies on that first song, it's just, you know, it, it I look at it is that is three and a half minutes of, if you want to call it a pop song, rock song, whatever. But I, I just, I know I'm going to get some crap from others that might hit us. It just makes me happy. That's it. <laughs> that's all right. Describe Southern California. Yeah. Put that song on. Yeah. 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 All right. Nice. Decker, number two. I'm more excited for my number two than I am my number one. Um, what the hell? <laughs> I just am. Uh, it's another Randy song. It's an older song. Too Many Hands. This is a song that is just, this is the, this might be their heaviest song. Um, and they are doing things guitar wise in this song. You know, this, this combination of, of Bernie and, and, and Felder, incredible. I was listening to it real closely today with headphones on. And I don't know who's, I couldn't find a live version of the song anywhere to see who's playing what. But whoever's playing the outro solo is playing scales that no one was playing back then like this. It was just, it was insane. It's got to be Felder. He wrote the song with Randy. Okay. Then this so be I played it's it. got to be him. And remember, now he's, this is uh, Bernie with him and Glenn Fry. They're not doing this. They just put him on this album. There They're showing go. him off. There you go. There you go. So, again, that that this is a, a deeper track. It's maybe their heaviest song that, that I have on my list, and I, I just love it. I think it's an amazing song. Too Many Hands, the new Lisa Sparks movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love the pick this, Joe. That's awesome. <laughs> Great oh. song. Oh. Now. I can't believe none of you assholes picked this song yet. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I told yeah. you it was going to happen. It's coming. It's number two. It's a huge hit for them. I don't get you people. Us big hit takers. Oh, I get Heartache tonight, man. Oh, Heartache, uh, Heartache tonight. I don't love it. What? I just don't love it. Oh, my God. So when I think of the Eagles and the I slap. think of... Yeah, besides that. <laughs> when I think of their harmonies, I think of nothing better than this song. True. I can sing this song in the shower, and I've done it many a times, where you can be the lead singer, and the, you let the band hit every <laughs> chorus, <laughs> everything else, and then you just jump in on your lines. There you and go. Even when he has his part where you can detect it's the lead singer singing outside of the harmonies. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He fucking... 
Again, I don't, I, I, he's not the best singer, but Glenn Fry kicks this out of the park. You know, when he gets to the, we can feel around the bushes, we can hit it down the ball, we can leave it in the parking lot, but either way. And then there's the, uh, the other one, uh, moon shining bright. So turn out the light and wait. And he's screaming this. Oh, it is. You know what? I'm going to use a new phrase. It is the Murph. This song makes me happy. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Already gone gives me like, fuck you, like angry happy. But Heartache Tonight makes me happier probably than any other song there is. <laughs> Fucking love it. It just makes it, it literally, it's about like a summertime party and you're just having a great yeah. time. Yeah. The course, you're around with your buddies, everybody's clapping tonight. The beat is just so fucking catchy. Of course, Bob Seeger has something to do with this yeah. song. He's yeah. one of the writers on this. Um, JD Souther, of course, uh, Glenn Fry, and Don Henley. It just such a fun song. And the fact that none of you jackasses had this. No, it's, even, ja it's jack offs. That, you know, it's both the, whatever. These shoes. I am Those shocked. Shoes. But heartache tonight. Fucking love it. And this makes me as excited like you. Like my number one's my number one. Right. But this yeah. makes me excited to say this is too. This, uh, I mean, I think it's just overplayed for me. It's just too many times on the radio, but it could have been my oh. honorable mention. All right. Number two for you, Ward. Continuing the streak of making me happy. <laughs> I used this one time as a line on a oh, chick I was crazy about, and it worked. What? Yeah. It worked? Good Lord. It, wor it, it worked. So I have very good memories <laughs> of this song. <laughs> it'll it'll kind of tell you the kind of woman she was. The Greeks don't want no freaks. Woman? Which day? And I, and I was a little Which bit younger, day? and I don't know if I'd do it today, but back then... Raven hair and ruby tips, lips. Sorry, tips. <laughs> hey, ruby tips. I he said Spark, spark, <laughs> sparks fly from her fingertips. This chick had never heard that before, and she thought I wrote it. And I wasn't going to about to break her spirit. Go with that. Go with it. You talk about making fond memories, and. I and I was raised, and I've mentioned it before, and I know Stevie's going to roll his eyes. I was raised real religious, and I was always taught the dangers of rock and roll. And I remember them mentioning the Eagles, and I'm like, the Eagles, you know, Lion Eyes, Tequila Sunrise, Take It Easy, Eagles, and they played this song, and they really took it that it was about witchcraft. But that line, Raven Hair and Ruby Lips, Sparks Fly from Her Singer, she thought that was the coolest thing that happened, and the rest is history. This Would we'll leave it that. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it, it's definitely up there as one of my favorites because it made me happy. What was, what was your number three award? Uh, Lion Eyes. Okay. Moon, All right. My number two, it's a repeat. And this is one I thought, well, I was kind of relieved when, when Decker had it earlier and Zeus was like, okay, never mind. He didn't really have a reaction to it. So, but Pretty Maids, uh, the, and the hell freezes over. Uh, you know, <laughs> hell freezes over. <laughs> yes. Hey, Look, Stevie, what what's your I favorite Eagles song? album? What did I say at the start? I got into it with hell freezes over. Do you even like the Eagles? No, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> do you like the Eagles? I can't do it right. You can't do it as good do as you me. like the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it was kind of shocking that Joe Walsh did this song to see Joe Walsh sing this song after <laughs> some of the songs he's done in the past. But great song, and like even better live version for me. I agree with Decker on that. But uh, yeah, Pretty Maze, my number two. I like it, Stevie. I like it a lot. Yeah, it was on your I get, list. I get a little bit of support. I like it a lot. It's not Is that the one he right. starts out? Hello, how are you? It's a long time. <laughs> yep, uh, he could go into an ace song after that, man. Yeah, it's very it's similar. similar. Shock me for this. <laughs> Put right. on your black leather. I can't do as good as Zeus. No, it doesn't work. That <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Joe Walsh is a fine line to get a. Yeah. 
I've yeah. heard you talk about that before. When you, yeah. you, you, you transition from the ace to Joe Walsh. You do a little deeper. You got to feel like you had a stroke or something. Yeah, it ain't <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> What is that? What is that? He says after life's been good, or something. He says after a one of his songs that he starts talking, and it, it makes no sense. I don't know if y'all are familiar with his solo stuff. Maybe yeah. it's with James Gang. I, he says something that I have to look it up and ask later. You got to narrow that down, probably. Yeah. No, he says something after one of his big hits that it's just it make it makes no sense. Only thing I remember after life's been good is the water drop sound. <laughs> No, he he says something. You know, oh, oh, like, oh, oh. Well, where's the I, cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> did, you ever, did y'all did any did any of y'all ever read uh, Felder's book? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where he talks about how he like took Joe to rehab all these times and Timmy to be Schmidt, but when Henley and told him to cut him off, they did. They just cut his ass. Well, that's yeah, like, story. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Bye. Right. Bye, Felicia. So we're sober now. So f them. That's why. Yep. Murph. All right. Number one. So for number one, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, I started off with Eagles Greatest Hits Volume 2. Bought it because of Hotel California. This song, uh, after playing the, the cassette in my 1979 Pontiac Sunbird. Oh, dude, my first car was an 89 Sunbird. Yeah, there you go. So nice. I, I, uh, the, the song that pulled me in, and I played over and over and over. I can't tell you why. Timothy Smith. I sorry, Zeus. I'm sorry. That's why it when when Zeus during the concert and Zeus gave me kind of the board emoji when this song came up, I was like, it hurt a bit. <laughs> that's the that's the song that Zeus goes grabs a beer when it's playing, right? Zeus, but just but oh, it's I, not I think bad. It, yeah, it's not bad, but I think it, you know the the out outro is just it's kind of you know, long. The, yeah, yeah, but I, I just it's love it. It's just it's a it's a kind of a cool chill. Felder sounds great, uh, and and you know there's that deep connection. That is the song that hooked me in Hotel California. <laughs> Got my attention. I can't tell you why is what made me an Eagles fan. And then, you know, going into it, yeah, sure, there's songs that are better, but that is the one that I will always say I'm an Eagles fan because of that. Was Hotel California even on your list, Murph? I don't remember. Number eight. Number eight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's funny how the Eagles, you know, you're getting into 79, right? So you're doing the long run. They don't do a disco song. Although I have a title, the Disco Strangler. Yeah. But they didn't yeah. do a disco song, and every other big artist at that point yeah. did it. They were experimenting. <laughs> they changed a lot of sound. That song has a lot of different things, instruments and sounds. And it's not as popish. They kind of really went out on limb a little on this, but it's uh it's got no disco on it. Did Rush ever do a disco album? That would have been something to hear. But that's a little what do you call it though? I don't know about Rush Rush. I don't I don't but, like um, but they but they did do R and B and that's what um, I can't tell you why is it's an R no I, I was a, that's a serious question. I'm not a rush fan, rush. so I, don't, no. I know the stones did I know no. Rod Stewart kiss, of course, but I didn't know uh, I'm not a rush kitty. How many you got left? There's still the five babies. They're oh, they're wow. all earmarked though. Okay, oh, that's good. Oh. I call this one skunky. Oh, God. <laughs> she's like get me off this camera yeah all right you're not you're not keeping you're not keeping one i've got two and okay. uh they're all going to family so and, and friends so they'll be able to keep in touch and see their parents here that's awesome but they're almost two months so now there's time to go yep. i used to love cats had a kid i'd had more cats than i did dogs but as i get older i'm allergic to cats i can't i can't be around them i i can't do the dog thing i can't do i, I would fucking blow up my brains if I had a dog scratching at my door three in the morning middle of a fucking winter storm in New England saying I gotta take a shit <laughs> you know what I'd be saying fuck it shit in the corner I'll pick it up tomorrow <laughs> and I'm not living like that <laughs> like I, I, I don't I couldn't do it or I get buddies that are be like yeah I can't go I gotta take care of the dog what fuck it I went to Virginia Beach for three days I these cats are fine that's true I can't do that with a dog true. nope yeah. No so. way you can do it with a dog. So, yeah. number one for Mr. Joe Decker. Number one, 
for me, um, the minute you decided to do this, this this was the song I had in my head immediately. Uh, one of these nights, I love that song. I've loved it for mm -hmm. so many years. To me, that's another one of those Felder guitar solos where it's that call and response. That man just plays a guitar like he turns it inside out. He just he plays all the night, all the right notes. Um, vocals are incredible. Just a just a great song and a great album. Definitely one of those great nights. Song. Number one for you. So, Zeus, can't wait to hear this. Oh, this hmm. is easy. Hotel California. Oh yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fucking build it up. There, uh, you know, it's one of the few songs. There's no fatigue. Um, Stairway to Heaven, same thing. I I, I don't wow. have fatigue mm. of it. There's very few. I can't. Love Gun comes on. I'm fatigued. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, other songs, you know, all right. I can get around it. But like listening to it and loving it still, very few. Hotel California, never mind the lyric. Every lyric, every verse has got a, in, like an inspiring lyric. That solo is my probably Thank my you. favorite solo of all time. That and probably I don't know, Stare to Heaven solo, uh, Sweet Child of Mine solo, uh, <clears throat> those ones, and uh, and something from uh, probably in the solo from uh, Randy Rhodes. All all the solos probably on that album, from Blizzard of Oz. Uh, but th it's just a perfect song. Mm -hmm. Sung perfectly, lyrics are perfect, the music is perfect, it builds and it leaves you with a beautiful outro that you know, like fast forward as soon as the lyric ends. No, no, no. You yeah. actually enjoy this part. It's one of the best um, parts. Yeah. And it's 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 just one of those things that I, I feel like since I love the Eagles so much that I you can boast about the brilliance of my band did this song. Yeah, absolutely. you know, top that. Oh, what your band <laughs> sang fucking <laughs> Time on my side, whatever that fucking awful rush song is. What is that song they do? Time stands still. Oh right? my god, oh. <laughs> that is horrendous. Is that what you the chick from fucking uh Boston till Tuesday? Did? Yeah, yeah. That yep. I saw a video for that. That is the like that's the 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 stuff that I say. Like I can't. This is so bad. Turn it off. It's awful. That shit. I agree with you. Thank when you. you when you said Tom is on your side, I thought you were talking the stones. No, 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 no. I know. I, oh, okay. The minute that I caught myself, I'm like, what uh, I did think that. No, I thought that too. Well, that awful, other awful roll the bones song. I like that's the shit where I'm like, I just, I don't understand. <laughs> that is the best rush oh, song my. ever. That is the only rush song I like. Roll the, it is. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that too. You don't like Tom Sawyer? No, I didn't like Carrie Von Eric. That song. I, there you go. World class championship wrestling. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But no, I I saw the Roll the Bones tour, and I think I told Zeus that it was Primus in Rush. You talk uh, about a sausage fest. I went with a buddy about of mine. Want to blow your brains out with bad God music? Is, <laughs> and, and the and the whole thing. Everybody talks about Geddy Lee. Everybody talks about uh, who's a who's a drummer? Neil, Neil Peart. Neil time. Pert. But Alex Lifeson is the best member of that band, the most talented. You know what? Because I like his stuff. I don't like because he vocals. looks normal. No, because he played his his. I mean, they right. Because I don't know right. what the fuck Getty Lee is. Yeah, is he human? I knew yeah. that was coming. But yeah, I, I mean, Roll the Bones is only good because it's it's a pop song, and it's the only one I could ever stand. So that's my favorite Rush song. There's promise there. that song. That song. Uh, my I, name is Mud. Yeah, is he's like, yeah, horrendously oh, weird. Good. God. In that weird video where they're like, oh. like cartoon cowboys, something, Winona's Big Beaver or something like that. Yeah. Ever see that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Is this Rush we're talking no, about? Primus. No, Primus. Winona's oh, Primus. Big Beaver. Oh, yeah, Primus. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry was a race car driver was her big hit. Isn't, isn't, isn't the, didn't the bass player a child from Metallica? He's you got it. Yep, memory. exactly. He's yeah, weird. He plays the bass very weird. Like Les Claypool. Unique. Les Claypool. Oh, it's so yeah. weird. Yeah, is he a South Park? Isn't he a South Park singer? Yeah, he did. Yeah. South Park. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Oh, God. Yeah, he Fucking totally he totally freaked out the guys from Metallica because yeah. he he said, uh, "You guys want to play any Everly Brothers?" So <laughs> I feel like great, yeah, great, that's what Metallica great band, great for. music. Yeah, Everly yeah. Brothers. Ugh. So Zeus had Hotel California number one. All right. Warden, can't wait to hear this. <laughs> okay. 
I gave it away. It's it's what I have on a disco stranger strangler. No, I'm just kidding. Stranger. It's not. I, that's what I thought it was. I mean, I've heard the song like once. It's kind of a throwaway. I mean, it's 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 okay. My favorite. No, it's been mentioned before. I think Murph had it or Joe had it. I, but I always thought this song inspired Paul Stanley, especially during the Kiss Animalize when he has to go to the doctor and get himself checked out. Oh, so I see the nurse and stuff, and what are you doing with that pistol in your pants, Paul? Jericho. Honey, that's no pistol. And okay, Mr. What is Dan, okay, what is Stanley Don, Eisen. What does Dan? What does uh, <laughs> Don Henley say? So what are you doing with that gu- that man's gun in your hand or whatever? How's yep. it go? Victim of love. Victim of love. Yep. I, I love that. I mean, I always think Paul Stanley was listening to that song before he did that concert, but you know, I uh, Felter was promised this song. He's still bitching about it in his book. But it's like Zeus said, how can you replace Don Henley? You can't. Uh, Don Henley could read a own book and still have a number one album, you know, back then. So Yeah, it's like the guitarist going, yeah, this is, uh, while you stepped out, Eddie Van Halen jumped in and did the solo. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> really? did you, should we replace that with yours? Yeah. But this is, this is like, probably the more, this and I think Hot Legs were two of the first heavy songs I heard after, of course, being, you know, Rhinestone Cowboy. And... This song has stuck with me. I liked it when they got back together reunion tour. I, it's been my favorite song probably my whole life of the Eagles. It's just it's never gotten old for me. I like the heaviness of it. I like the what they were going to. I would have been cool if they were went more towards this way with the long run, kind of the heavier stuff. But I mean, of course, it's it's not typical Eagles if you ask me. And I think that's why it's so different than a lot of stuff they do, and it stood out for me. Do you approve of that, Stevie? V- victim of love. I was gonna say the Elton John version. Give of that. You. you know, that's a good. I'll give you. Too. I'll give you. I'll give you a thumbs up for that one. That's okay. that's not bad. That's not fight for your ride or torpedo girl. So, did you uh, ever think that Garth stole that when he tried to do victim of the game? Ah, uh, you've been. I'm, I'm, I'm running those victim lyrics through my head. Of the game. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever heard know. that, Warden? No, who's that by? No, it's not the it's not the music. It's just the title. Yeah, the title. Like, yeah, victim of vi- the game by Garth. There's some there's some song I forget which one it was, but I think um, who's that band that beat Metallica for the Grammy? Jethro uh, Jethro 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 there's some song that they claim that their Eagles ripped off from. Yeah, them. they say that it's a rip off of. And it sounds them. nothing like it. It's I my voice. Long. What song is that? The only song I know about it is Aqua Lung, and I, I hate it. Yeah, Aqua Lung. on the park. <laughs> yeah, hey, Aqua Lung. That's the one Howard Stern plays, sitting on the park bench. Da, da, da. He had Leslie West on there playing it, but they say they rip off some song. I forget what it was. It's but stupid. It sounds yeah. nothing like the Eagles song. That was the biggest travesty, right? I remember watching that that night, and I was like, oh, Metallica's getting this. And then all of a sudden, the guy said, the winner is Jethro Tull. And I see these guys come out there, and I was like, who the freaking hell are these guys? Jethro Tull. They're playing a flute. flute. All right, Steve, you hurry up and pick Take It Easy. I'm not taking Take It Easy. <laughs> what? No. Take It Easy from uh, the Hell uh, Frozen Over album. <laughs> no, I'm actually picking Hotel California. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, I mean. Deep Cut City. Yeah, really. <laughs> but I, just like you said, Zeus, not the lyrics, the guitar solo with Felder and Walsh trading back and forth, and just for that alone, you know, I, me and me and Decker talked about it one time. We were talking about this was before the list came along, and we were talking about Hotel California. I said, you know, that's just what probably one of my favorites, or just for the solo yeah. itself. I mean, not just the lyrics. The lyrics are great too, but yeah, when they trade back and forth, and yes, I'm a, I, I like the intro on the Hell Freezes Over part when they do the different little intro there at the start of it. That, that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, you, you like you said, it's a perfect song. Do you, Did remember you guys the ever old vi- the old video of it? Yes, uh, yes. For, I think it's the forum they play. I'm not yeah. sure where it is, but you know. And then it, that image is me, the image of the band, Don Henley with the fro, the <laughs> yeah. two guitarist. Uh, what's the name with the uh, the grunge outfit and the suspenders and the beard looking like Jesus Felder and yeah. just doing that 
shape, that thing up and down, and then him and fell um, Walsh going back and forth, and then each of them doing that slide, so and then the other one goes right back, and then uh, what's the name doing all those crazy looking faces? Yeah, they're just um, trading back, Walsh, trading like, ah, back and forth, yeah, like all those fucking that, that meth twitch color? that he's doing. Yes, oh, and so I cool. remember, and then I'm like. Randy Meisner, this is when I first saw the old video when I started listening to him again. And someone told me that, oh, that's where Glenn Fry is. He used to be in the Eagles. I'm like, where the fuck is he? And he was like featured the <laughs> least out of them. And then they showed a guy with a big, thick Davy Lopes mustache. I'm like, How many- oh, shit, that's him. <laughs> yeah, the uh, University of Colorado t shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. That image of the band and them playing that is just embedded in my head that video the hey, song that those the song guys that, that band at that time how, how much fun they must have been having that must have been like better than anything ever to be in that band in that era in those mm-hmm. years playing that song do you know how much confidence you must have had like i don't give a fuck what we're doing oh, who we're yeah. playing what's going on we will we can sing we can play better yeah. than fucking anybody yeah. we have better songs you have better music we have better musicians yeah. fuck off yeah the song that the Jethro Tull accused them of ripping off was actually a song called We Used to Know. And they say Hotel California rips that off. Bullshit. Yeah, I awesome. listened to it. This sounds nothing like it. No. Yeah. Stay Hotel, Cal- Cal- Hotel, Cal- you. Hotel California. It, it's funny about that because that whole they're evil and devil worshippers. There's somebody on the back of the cover that's like bald or something. Yeah. And they, were saying was, yeah. they were saying it, they were saying it was. <laughs> Did you say <laughs> Yeah, Anton LaVey, the guy the head of the Satan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Tony really Michelle him. looks Is like really Anton LaVey. Uh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's him. <laughs> I mean, I think I could pull that off with a goatee, but that's not Anton LaVey. I mean, no, really... but it's it is a young Tony Musala. But it's, it's just <laughs> no, and the right. Eagles, of course, and the Eagles never like Kiss. They never disputed that because you know why? It sold albums because it is exactly. like me bought it. Oh. It's devil worshiping about but that know, shithead Tony. I'm bringing his name up for a reason. Uh oh, he's the one that was like when we did the album review. He goes that that album cover is an iconic. I'm like, do you not know what the fucking word iconic means? <laughs> like you don't need to like the band, but that cover cover yeah. is iconic. When you see that hotel it in the stands in the, out in the exactly, you know it's legendary. It's iconic. Exactly. No, it's not. It's not iconic. I'm like, dude, fucking get a dictionary. Is he the one that posts on your Twitter account? Because like you posted something about being iconic, and he yeah, said, "Yeah, he's the idiot that was doing that." I, he's just he he's Sonny's best friend, so yeah. obviously he's a troll. <laughs> he's our friend, but he's a fucking troll. Does he the have burner accounts too? Um, I don't know, but you know, that, there's, there's both one you, legendary you, 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 trolls. You guys kept calling the come up emerging, and there is somebody on Twitter with that handle. And I was like, I'm wondering. I was like, I said, I wonder if this is that guy. But anyway, and who was that guy saying that y'all are right, uh, getting a hard on for Paul? And it's like, okay, Debbie Downer, I put that on there. Womp womp. And yeah, like, there's just like, fun. dude, whatever. Just After don't comment. A while, Move on. You start becoming usual. When I mean, you guys uh, will soon hit the big time, you'll see like you'll expand your audience, and you'll be like, holy shit, this is awesome. Holy shit, yeah. now we got a bunch of idiots fucking <laughs> tell us we're assholes. <laughs> or someone's complaining about my voice. Or You got to take it. Yeah, like, it. You, yeah you got to exactly. take it easy. Yeah, you got to take it easy. Like Don, uh, uh, like Glenn Fry saying, right? Mm-hmm. So can we do my favorite part now? Yes. yes. Stevie, give us your 25 fucking honorable mentions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. I, hey, I Ooh. only put four. Can I can I just shoot mine off first? Yeah, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna give you four. And the reason why I'm giving you four, and mind you, every song that I didn't pick could be an honorable mention, but I'm gonna give you four because there's four songs that almost made my list that nobody fucking picked. So I want to discuss them real quickly. One is the last resort because I think it's yes. fucking epic. That song. The that lyrics, was- the vocals. That, Joe, end- that was my number three that I was struggling with, and I oh, took it out. That was the one. Okay. Yep. okay. That ending part when when the, like the seagulls and something you can mm-hmm. hear, and then he softly the music goes away, and then you hear the little you piano, hear- and then you hear his voice coming. You can leave it. All- I can't sing like Don Ellie. Yeah. Leave it all behind. Oh yeah, my I god! It's just the vocals are just off the charts. Um, the next one is the reason. Um, Another reason why they brought in a Don Felder 
and that is the guitar specifically on Good Day in Hell on yeah. on the border. That's on my that fucking yeah. song. Yeah. Kicks ass. It is so cool. Yeah. And you're like, God, this is fucking actually heavy. Thank yeah. you. And they're like, yeah, let's uh I think we need to make this guy full time member because yeah. Good Day yeah. in Hell is awesome. Uh the the uh second to last Midnight Flyer Randy Meisner and you got the Bernie Ledin uh banjo going his vocals on that and the harmonies ooh maybe go down to San Antonio oh my god oh jeez the runaway train of horses to make me stay oh my god it's awesome he's just does a great job and the last one I'll leave you with and I'm going to think about what Joe was talking about earlier and that is Teenage Jail the guitar on that that fucking guitar solo into the outro that takes up most of the song holy shit between that and those shoes the the it's just off the charts Incredible. teenage jail i like the song itself but listen to that guitar if that doesn't make you like who who the fuck is doing this unbelievable teenage jail nice, nice. those four all right i like that one murph you got any honorable mentions yeah, I mean, uh, most of the songs that I had were already referenced to Kilo Sunrise, Already Gone, Long Run. The one song that I had in consideration that I don't think anyone mentioned was uh, from Desperado, uh, Saturday Night. I got it yeah. on that. Nice. Nice. And guess who did that on Common Thread, Juice, you know? Um, I do. That's uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. the guy that sang the song We Don't Agree, right? We just disagree. Billy Dean? Yeah, that's him. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's just a great. I mean, we talk a lot about we'll, we'll get a, a little kickback from them for selling that album because that's that's a great album. We talked about that enough tonight. So Yeah, we should get yeah, some royalties on that one. Yeah, we got we need to. Maybe we'll get a tree out of it. Yeah, I think um Saturday night is also off the live album, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Which is very rare that they put that on there. All right, Joe, you got any honorable mentions? Uh, a lot of we talked about. So Good Day in Hell, uh, Old 55, Saturday Night. And I, I'm a huge fan of, of Randy's voice, Certain Kind of Fool. I love that song. I love Nice. That song. His voice just, it, I think it's, I don't know. It, I love it. All right, Warden. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Desperado, of course. Best of my love. Uh, both of them are just kind of overplayed for me. Uh, the song, the long run. Well, I like that song, uh, those shoes. And I don't know if Zeus likes this song or not, but get over it when he I talks do. about, Oh, Willie is right. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, what and, album uh, was that off of? Hell is over. Okay. okay. Yeah. But that song, <laughs> that song was, it came out at a great appropriate time in the politically correct nineties. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I like to find your little Aaron child and kick his little ass. I mean, you imagine if he did that today, my god, he'd be canceled. Cool. Culture. The, the and, problem with that, though, Jason, is he's like the most probably that song describes Don Henley more than anybody. Yes, exactly. He's fucking exactly. sensitive little know it all little bitch. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely right. And when he does all these songs about like forgiveness and shit, he don't do that to Felder. He talks about in what's that song? I think it's about forgiveness, forgiveness. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah he forgave him. Yeah, exactly. It's the Paul Stanley form of preaching. Everybody needs to be nice. You need to forgive, mm -hmm. move on. Except, Except that Peter, Peter Chris, Chris, that fucking asshole. <laughs> and um, my last, my last deep track. I, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't too. I mean, I we've heard it over the years, but and my Am Apple Music has been, you know, playing there is Nightingale. <gasps> that is a really deep song that I love, and it's just it's a. I love yeah. that song. Yes. Do you know what's not, amazing about that? Hmm. That's the only the number two song of Henley on the first album. Yeah. And it wasn't originally going to be on the album. And then they came back and like, you know what? Don Henley's only singing one song on this. You got to give him one, something else. Was and Don Henley saying that or were the artist people saying no, that? No, I think the artists. I mean, yeah. I think the producers and everybody. And Glenn Johns and everyone was saying, like, dude, he's only got one song. He's got to do something else. He doesn't. I mean, you can tell. I mean, he's really. I mean. You, you listen to that, you wouldn't think it's Don Henley because he's so young, you know, kind of yeah. like a young James Hetfield sounds different when he does now, of course, you know, four yeah. years later. But that one popped up and it, it almost made my top 10. And but I had to go with Hotel California because it's so iconic. And of course, you know, my fascination with Anton LaVey, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
So now we're saying he's a Satanist. Okay. So <laughs> you didn't know that, right. Steve? Yeah, yeah. I'm becoming more aware of it. The horns are starting <laughs> to pop up. All well, right. There ain't no hair to cover them, so I got to come out from somewhere. So you want to hear my thirty? Yeah. yeah, we go. Like I said, last resort. That was that was up until this afternoon. That was on my list. Um, Saturday night, I like that Murph. Uh, then we got victim of love. Best of my love. One of these nights, and take it to the limit. That's yeah. that's. I didn't have thirty this time, Warren. So I could have just I mean, said the you, rest you, of the Eagles discography. I could have just said that. And you're and you're um and and I'm giving you a hard time about that, but I think so far, I mean, we just did ACDC, we just did Motley. This has been the hardest list for me because with those other ones, there's a lot of fluff. But like yeah. I think Zeus said yeah. it earlier, and Murph, but man, this and Joe, yeah. speaking from the musician side, I mean. This is just, I mean, this is it a, was a music, tough one. This is, joke is impossible. This, this is a band that you know it, they're not like Rush, to where like it's a real like musician's band. <laughs> and oh, and I'm not cutting them down. They're not for me. I, I'm never, you know, I like roll the bones for God's sake. But this is a band that musicians and also fans can come together on. I mean, a lot of people don't like Kiss because they're keep it simple, stupid. But the Eagles, I mean, I know that they got a lot of crap for you know being syrupy and. There's a lot of hate for the Eagles. You ever seen the Big Lebowski? Yeah. I, I mean, my my boy. God. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, but you know, the Eagles, no. So, uh, Stevie, you said "Best of My Love." Was that yeah. the only one that hasn't been mentioned? Yeah, yet? I think that was only that didn't get mentioned by anybody. That was my. How many mentioned. songs we mentioned? Yeah. yeah. And we don't have duplicates. And think of all the deep cuts that we talked about at well, the I end. Mean, yeah. That's insane. You could, you could easily. You know, and I know Joe is the same way, and I'm sure all of you guys are the same way. You could easily, it would make it so much easier if we did a top 20. And oh, yeah. then, but you say that now, but then you'd be like, okay, that, that next 10 would fill up quick, and then you'd be like, oh, God, what am I leaving out now? If, I mean, they've got so many great songs. And, I mean, you I can't. Got, I made spreadsheets to me. To, I, I mean, I got songs. <laughs> yeah, Deck, Decker called me today. He said, dude, I got spreadsheets, and I've got them here. coordinated. <laughs> Which once this is definitely out in the red. The purple means oh, maybe it, it was hard. I mean, because their catalog, their their release and out of their out of all their albums, there might be five songs that I really don't care for, and that's saying a lot. That's that's a yeah, lot of music. Exactly, but nothing you like turn that shit off. No, yeah. nothing like that. Not nothing like that. No. I hadn't listened to Long Road Out of Eden in a while, and when I got to it the other day on my album challenge thing, I was like, okay. You know, this might not be good, but, you know, there's a lot of good songs on that I, that I forgot about. There's something I'm learning as, you know, like Zeus said, as we kind of get more and more, and Stevie's been doing the podcast longer than me. Don't ask your friends about their about what they think about your list, and don't especially ask your musician friends, because I sent this list to a buddy of mine that plays bass really good and loves the Eagles. And I had Hotel California as my number. He read my list wrong because it was Apple Music. It went from bottom up. So I had Hotel California. He thought that was my first one. He goes, how can you do that without the last resort? I mean, he gave me this list of songs. And I'm like, you know what? And it's pretty good that me and Stevie don't share ours before we talk about it. Don't. Don't do it. Yeah, I've learned. And that was a valuable lesson now because you, you, oh, it's kind of like I'm a perfectionist and I kind of overdo stuff. So this is, I've been listening to Eagles all freaking day at work. I drive some. And it's like, I got to quit doing this shit to myself because it's like, didn't Joe say he studied for the SATs? Yeah. Less, I mean, Murph, same thing. Murph, Murph was texting yeah. me saying, like, I'm so fucking excited. This, Can yeah, you get a list. Maybe we should have done a draft. Oh, blah, blah, blah. We're like going back and forth. Yeah. All Dude, there's not many. Okay. I can tell you this. There's not many bands you can get like the five of us you can think of that yeah. would it gets that excited about doing a, a thing like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we did pretty good too. I think you know we're we're right at three hours now. I, we were talking today. We said we may go five hours on yeah. this thing. Wait, wait, that. Didn't, didn't you have another buddy of yours that wanted to be on here too? And I was like, I yeah, don't, yeah, it's so work, you know. If we'd have had six, we'd have been four hours. Yeah, it'd be four yeah hours more for time. Do you got to get up, buddy? No, no. I actually got up at three thirty this morning to take my son to the airport. So oh, that's right. Yeah. So he's had a long day. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh uh, yeah, well, we're gonna get Murph out here. So you guys are all you guys are all Eastern time, Coast, so I'm like an hour Coast, behind yeah. you guys. So yeah, yeah. actually, it's only nine thirty for me. <laughs> going back to the airport, my wife's going. My daughter was uh, she was actually doing a cross country trip, and she, she actually just left Dallas about two hours ago. Oh wow! 
Oh, wow. Tell her to watch out for the disco, uh, disco strangler yeah. down there. <laughs> yeah. San Antonio, watch though, man. Talent. Do not let him know where she's at, please. Right. Anyway, thank you guys. Uh, thank Joe, you. Yes, thank Bird, you. Really appreciate Zeus, it. Zeus, thank you guys so much. And before we go, we got, I mean, of course, Zeus has – he has a little podcast that does pretty well that we, and, and I think it's that podcast is, is responsible for us all being here in one way or the other, yeah. but uh, Zeus, where can they find you? Where can they find a shout it out loud cast? Um, well, anywhere you find your podcast, uh, you guys know, we usually do. We are a kiss podcast. We do the album review, which is a non-Kiss album review. We do that with Sonny Pooney once a month. We have the Zeppelin Chronicles. We're breaking down Zeppelin's uh, albums because they're another one of our favorite bands. And we have Murph on for that. Murph comes on all the time. He's our, uh, our I don't know, gunslinger that we bring in. They're our ringer from the time to time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we got a, a bunch of new things coming up on the on the pod. Stay tuned for it. Um, we have uh, the second half of this year is going to be pretty, pretty interesting. You guys will see. So stay tuned. Cool. Uh, so you can find them at shoutitoutloudcast.com on their website, too. Check out their website. Uh, so there's plenty have... of people at the kids' table room available for new listeners. Don't get yeah. me fucking started on those assholes. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk off the air on that. I had, yeah. to, I had to mention that. I just had to. That's but, all good. Uh, we love being I did there. See, I did see a comment come up on Twitter a while ago on your YouTube channel about uh, Sam Loomis made a little comment. So, uh, oh yeah, we get ready to see a second, second wave, second, of- second sighting. Mm-hmm. Off the record, even though we're taping live, <laughs> uh, off the record, behind the scenes, you have no idea how much stupid shit we have been getting over the last. I bet. I bet. And of people texting us and us kind of talking to some of, if not all, of the players, and hearing what's going on. And who's doing what? And so and so is going to say this. And so and so is going to admit this. So and so is not going to admit this. So and so had nothing to do with it. It's all over the fucking place. Wow. Uh, we, you know, we just we put it out there from what we asked when we had our guest on. It's exploded, and then all of a sudden, this guy put it on our on our YouTube page again. More shit blew up, and uh, stay tuned. It's a lot oh. more to come. I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you need to. You need to. This is like the you, you guys talked about on, on one of your episodes about what was, what was more fun to seeing the videos or the drama, and it is drama. becoming the drama. Yes, I didn't the see drama. any of the videos. I don't give a shit, really. Well, I saw. I, I watched them. I, I like the videos. Sometimes I saw people. Yeah, you know, losers. Crap. Okay, so I shouldn't say I didn't see any. I saw some, and this is what I saw of. Hey, it's the middle of a song. Oh, skip it to something else. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I, I'm not interested in that shit. Yeah. No. I'd rather not see that stuff. Like I said, is it an unreleased footage of Gene firing Peter Chris? <laughs> like that'll be interesting. I'll watch that. But like <laughs> hey, fuck footage of them <laughs> skipping around songs and from yeah. the asylum tour. I, I can imagine that when I see photos of the tour. I'm cool. just, I'm I just amped up. You know, I, I, I want to see Eric Carr footage. That's that's what I'm looking for. I mean, there's yeah, not enough don't. out there. There's something there. Okay, there we go. One uh, before you get All off right. that, I just love to watch this. And I think a part of the summit came out right. I mean, I went to see Kiss a few years ago with Def Leppard in Houston, and I was talking to an old Kiss fan. And I say, "How cool is it that the summit is now a Joel Osteen church?" And there, how much fornication went on in that church back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> just by Gene. Well, I can imagine. All right, like I said, Joe. Thank you, sir. We you well, like you the, the third member of the On the Fly podcast. Yeah, this, Fusion Tech. This was great. And, and Murph, glad to finally meet you to put a yes. thanks to the nice boys. Nice to meet you, sir. Appreciate you taking time out to do this. I know you're tired. Uh, we're gonna let you get out of here. But uh, Zeus, as always, buddy, thank you. We'll we'll have you back yes. on again soon. Thank and, you, uh, Warden. Uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Much appreciated. All right. That's going to do it, guys. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week on the fly. See you guys.